make a motion to approve the agenda with the change of the reports from 6B to 6E. Second. We have motion second. All those in favor? Motion passes 7 0. Uh, pages informational form. I don't believe we have anything there, correct? Consent agenda. For questions or a motion to approve the consent agenda. Make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Motion passes 7 0. <laughs> Good for a uh, bank reconciliation weren't registering cash fund balance reports. Make a motion to approve the bank reconciliation weren't registering cash fund balance reports as presented. Second. Good motion. Second. All those in favor? Motion passes 7 0. Um, All right. If I could just interrupt. Jim, did you want to say anything about how we might present some of the budgeting or use that during the budget report? I'll mention during the budget report and then next, next month I'll show them. Show them how we're going to try to give you a little bit different information about the budget, so we'll talk a little bit about that. All right, we'll move on down the reports. We have uh, OPA presentation. Everybody wanted to be here because they bought food, so um, <laughs> <laughs> OPA nice is going to share, share uh, tonight. So, cool. I think Kitty and uh, Nicole are here. And, okay. Uh, I think it was, uh, I'm trying to figure out, uh, I had a great suggestion from somebody the other day about doing maybe a vendor pair. Maybe that was Kim when we were meeting. But, I want to try to get some of the people that uh, do the work here at uh, Piper to come in and visit with the board. Um, I think it's important that you meet the people that are, uh, well, in this case, serving the, the food to our kids. Uh, in other cases, it'll be who are driving the kids around, around mm -hmm. Piper and that type of thing. So uh, we're going to turn it over and let Oprah uh, tell us what they've been up to. All right. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's a cup more coffee in there. I know. Mr. Wynn's been real supportive of it. We're working through 
tech issues, and James is helping us with some of that, and I'm sure he'll continue. Uh, we're just having trouble being able to connect <coughs> all the kids in the hallways, connect to the tablets and computers to get them. But we started out doing about 12 to 15 breakfasts um, at the beginning of the year. Um, last week they hit 59 breakfasts for the high school, so we're really excited about that. Well, I think um, the important thing is that the kids are getting fed, and I think you know, when it comes to learning, I, I think we, we oh, yeah. forget we forget about the importance of the uh, the healthy side and, and, and kids getting something to eat. I will say, Hope has been uh, at least my year here has been very. Uh, willing to be innovative and be able to do things to try to get as many kids sure. served as possible. So That's what we meant. So we the second chance that. breakfast actually comes to the kids. We go down in the hall or in the conference area <coughs> and we run it as a grab and go. We offer them a few a la carte items. They like the drinks and stuff so we take some of those. Mostly the grab and go, uh, grab and go breakfast so they just have to pick up a sack and go. So we've been feeding between 35 and 40 down there in that five or six minute passing period. So they like it a lot. So. <coughs> Where'd you go? I don't know. Who's got my Oh. <laughs> I'm trying to do it right over here. Uh, I put it in a PDF, so. Oh, you did? So the board could see it. Okay. Well, I think the only other thing that was on there was the new protein packs that we... I can, I can go back. There, go. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. We do have some new menus at the high school. If you guys haven't checked out the menus at the high school, you should. Nutra Slice is a really interactive menu um, for everybody to see. What they look like, what's in them, nutrition information, and all of that. So allergy information can be found on the Nutrislice menus. And the high school has been uh, changed up so we offer more entree items for the kids. So they have about, oh, on a specially, good specialty bar day, we could probably offer them 10 different entrees that they can pick to make a reimbursable meal. So, so that means when reimbursable, <coughs> that's for free, anybody can get that? Yes, it. absolutely. Get that. Yes. Um, and the new thing are the protein packs. We've got a few samples of those. Um, the board would love to see them. We're excited. Yeah. Those are nice. Yeah. So yeah. Take us a so lunch tomorrow. They are, they are, they are, they are, they are a reimbursable meal for the kids. They're just taking lunch. Yeah. Um, I'm going to get ready to take them all out. Yeah. 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 And I think the kids, especially in the spring, because some of them, are, the track teams seem to be gone forever, yeah. having been around yes. here and done those trips, um, they're gone till nine, ten o'clock at night sometimes. Yeah. So having something like that, that maybe coaches can pack in a cooler and take, I think would be great for them. So, yeah, it's a re we put them in the lunchroom and it's a reimbursable meal for the kids. So free, reduced, anybody can get them. So it's all good. We like that. Yeah, yeah, you may. Yes, you may. I'm so sorry. I lost track. Uh, these are just some things that we want our core values to make sure it continues improvement. We're really trying to work with what the kids like and what we can get them, more options, um, and things like that. So we are compliant with all of our federal and uh, state guidelines, um, compliant with our point of sales and our food safety. We'll have an admin review next year with the state, so we'll again get to go through that. We do offer staff treats. Hopefully, you all are seeing some of them in your rooms or in your lounges. Um, the middle school and high school offer beverage stations like you see down there. We offer crystal light, teas, waters, flavored waters, whatever the girls feel like throwing out there, or gentlemen, I should say, throwing out there at the, at the time. Um, and at the elementary, we offer water. The um, East Elementary has the dispensers like those and the Elementary West, they just like us to give them cups if they like to go to the water fountain. They don't like them carrying little cups of water around and I don't believe them. <laughs> so, just trying to get some things out there the kids like. These are just some numbers I compared first semester uh, from last year to first semester mm -hmm. this year. We actually had the same number of serving days but we're up on student lunches. Um, a little down on student breakfast. I'm not really sure why that would be because we're doing more at the high school right now. Um, adult lunches were up on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think we're getting what some does more define adult, adult friendly lunch? things. I'm sorry? What does define an adult lunch? Same. Is it someone coming in or is it a teacher or what is the... It can, it can be either teachers are counted as adult lunches. Yeah. If we have parents, like mm -hmm. the West Elementary will have a lot of parents sometimes that come in. Teachers. East has a few. So if a parent comes in, 
or if we have sometimes the blood drives at the high school a lot of times we offer those coupons um, to them and we'll feed them for free anytime we have um, the our services that come in the Navy or them that are coming in and talk to the kids or the college ones we'll offer uh, free coupons for those they do get counted as so it's not portion related, it's just... Right, it's tracked separately because are, okay. there's no reimbursement tied to the calls. They, we do bump it. It's yeah. not typically... If you get a salad like the kids, if you ordered a salad, you would get a bigger portion of that. Um, obviously, a chicken patty is a chicken patty. But on things that we can, that it would be a bigger portion, pastas and stuff like that, we would be giving the adults a little bit bigger portion. Mm -hmm. Uh, these are some of the things that we use. Surf safe is a uh, food safety class that uh, myself and all the kitchen managers have to take and pass. So we are surf safe as uh, for restaurants. I uh, can explain maybe any, any food service establishment. Any food service establishment. Uh, a little above and beyond what the, the state requires for just our food service staff. So the CAMS and I are a little pressed a little harder to learn things. Um, we do do professional development. We have some specific hours that we have to. Um, I lost my words. We call it uh, really professional. Are, yeah, professional development. We call it standards. Like professional CU, standards. CU, CU. Yeah. So, hours, so. <clears throat> um, we have certain criteria to meet for the state as to how many that are, and USDA as to how many each of us have to do, whether we're <coughs> online staff, kitchen managers, or myself. This is just a shot of our Nutri-Slice menus. Um, like I said, if you haven't been on to see the menus, you really need to get on there and play around a little bit. We've got um, some, it's got all of your allergy information on it. Any nutritional information you want, if you're looking at carbs or calories or um, any of that stuff. And if you click on the actual item, it'll show you a picture of what it should look like. <laughs> We're working real hard on that. So it gives the kids an idea. <coughs> These are just some of the things that we, we've helped out. Convocation breakfast, we've done that for the last several years. Um, we do that when we do graduation breakfast. I don't know if I put that one on there. We usually do graduation breakfast in the, um, the senior day that we have up here. We usually do a breakfast for them. Uh, we have national school lunch week in the fall. Uh, we do Valentine cookies for everybody or a treat of some kind for everybody this year. Grandparents tea for the pre K is coming up soon. Um, we will cater to anything. If you have a club or an organization that's out there and you want some uh, meals with that, um, contact us. We've done the fall festival before when you guys start, first started out doing those. Um, even if it's something that you think we might be able to uh, help with food wise, I know the Boy Scouts, when they do their pancake breakfast at Christmas time for breakfast with Santa, they'll usually come and order the food for me. <coughs> We just bill them out as a price. And softball teams done um, fundraisers with me. I'll bill them as a per plate price. So we just count how many they do. So willing to work with anybody on any of that stuff, your teacher days, whatever, we're willing to work with. We can do about any many. It doesn't have to follow any guidelines when we're doing adults. So or even students if it's not, or even students if it's an after true. school event, it doesn't. Yeah. If it's after school events, I have no guidelines. So tell me what you need, I'll be there. And you did even that foot, um, post game football meals. You guys put them in the nice sack lunches, and you guys that was yeah. so incredible. Yes, we did. The coach, for all the kids the coach after had the game. Doing sack lunches for the boys. And yeah, they, they did a great job. It was so, so nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, these are just Opus core values that we really strive to follow. Those I think they're. Um, not just for our kitchens, but in our life as well. So that's a little bit about us. I just want to say thank you to Opa because I know you, your staff has always been really friendly and wonderful yeah. to deal with, and we've, with, whether it was a PTA or with the festival or anything else over the years, we've always so we don't always take time to say thank you. But I hope everybody knows it's appreciated how easy it is to deal with and get things. So. That's what we're here for to help out. We had a preliminary discussion. I want Dr. Dane to know this. Uh, you, know, it, it, you know, as we talk about doing CTE, and I know uh, we have some people interested in culinary arts and that type of thing. Opa, you know, is willing to sit down and see if uh, a partnership could be created through that as well, so our kids can get involved in uh, the food service industries and those type of things. 
Absolutely. I'm curious on these. I don't want to spend too much time, but I love the idea of them being able to take them like for track. Yeah. Is there a way? Is that something as a parent? I'd have to prepay, or they would just swipe their card and take it at they lunchtime, or tell the coach or something. Account. You're going to start uh, partnering with the coaches to make these available yes, ahead of. I love that. Um, I'll yeah. make up a flyer of some kind yeah. with pictures of them all on yeah. there, and then yeah. we'll have them ready whenever they're ready to leave. If okay. They say they have to leave at two. We're done yeah. before that, and but I need to be here later. It's great, on. great yeah. idea. Because so, yeah, I don't always get there in time for. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Excited to be here tonight. Um, this year has been working on relationships and community involvement. So tonight you're going to hear from Amber Heather, who's our STEM teacher. She's going to do an update on the greenhouse because we shared the greenhouse project with you earlier in this year. Uh, Keisha, who's our first grade teacher at our school, she's also working on her admin. So this nice. is her direct field. So she's going to do a presentation on the clubs that we have going on in our schools that also have parents that are leading them, which is amazing. We also have our site council here tonight um, with Sarah, Gina, and Kate, and so they're going to talk to you about a project that we're working on. And then we also have Girl Scout Troop 1870, our fifth nice. graders, that are also partnering with us, and they're going to finish off and let you know what work they're doing for us at our school. So lots of great things happening this year, and so I have a lot of people that I couldn't tell no. I just thought I'd ask for forgiveness. <laughs> so let's get started. Thank you. <laughs> And so uh, the focus is enriching relationships, um, looking at our district mission, uh, vision and mission for building a future one child at a time. I like the fact that we have underlined that every opportunity will be made to engage and partner with community members to maximize learning. How does that look at PWES? Um, to start off with, we have our inclusion council that meets um, once a month, the first Friday of every month generally, to discuss how we honor diversities in our community. Some of the things that we have done at Piper West is um, we have monthly celebrations, um, Hispanic Heritage Month, African American um, uh, Month, we have um, Disability Month. We try to be very inclusive in all the people that are in our family. Um, we've created the Hall of Flags. We've had, we've hosted two family and community engagement nights now. Um, and this year, we are having our third annual diversity festival um, on April 23rd at 6.30. If any board member would be interested in having a booth to share their culture, we would love to have you. Mm -hmm. uh, a club that we have just start, we've started last year um, was American Sign Language Club. It is actually um, ran by Anthony Bishop, who is a certified ASL instructor through the Kansas School for the Deaf, um, Dr. Becky Davis along with Deanna Denny, um, sponsor the club for second graders on Thursday afternoons. Um, one of the things, some of the things that we've done with AS ASL this year is um, we've incorporated that into our weekly announcements in the morning. Mm -hmm. We have um, put signage up around the school to label um, classrooms and things like that. And then one of the just most heartwarming things that happened this year was at the music concert, they signed um, several of the songs, and it was just, it was fantastic. Um, Charlotte Waldeck, she told me that it was so fun, and she was very excited to learn um, a new language, and this was something that her mom wanted to do when she was in college, and she never got around to it, so um, we're just trying to build that connection with um, our community and make sure that our students and family needs are met within PWES. Also, um, this year for our um, diversity festival, they're going to start us off with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance, and they're going to sign it, as well as our Piper Pride Pledge. That we're going to sign that as well. Awesome. Yeah. Um, the next one is Coding Club that meets on Tuesday and Thursday mornings. Uh, Miss Rebecca Martin sponsors that club, uh, and they get to create and explore different projects, and um, it is just a fantastic way for students to go deeper into coding and learn more about 21st century learning um, because at this moment we are
teaching our students for and preparing them for jobs that don't exist yet. So coding club is just a great way to get those kids engaged um, at a younger age um, and get them interested in um, technology and wanting to go into those fields and create them. Yeah, so what time does that start in the morning? It Are they getting at dropped seven, off early? 720. 720. Yeah. So they just yeah. get dropped so off early? They, they just got, get yeah, dropped right. off early and the teachers uh, collect them at the door and they go down and you guys work pretty much until what, 8? 8.20, like right before the school, the classes and doors open up. So. And they love it, so it's very exciting. Uh, Piper Proud, it's in, in its second year at Piper West. Um, it is an opportunity to provide a positive environment for first graders um, and just give them to grow their confidence and build those leadership skills and give them opportunities for problem solving. Um, it is sponsored by uh, Tessa Davis, who's a first grade teacher, and um, Morgan Buckner, who's also a first grade teacher. Um, this year, the change is they have partnered with the Piper High School Do Be Nice programs, mm -hmm. and so they have uh, Do Be Nice mentors come down um, every other Thursday to help host that club. So we're just we're trying to reach out and grab everybody. So they're great mentors too. Yes, and that one starts at 7.50, and it's only open to first grade students. So, um, the next one, it just got started probably about a month ago or so, yeah. is Spanish Club. Yes, Dr. Um, K. Ron Bradley brought this idea to uh, Tessa Davis, the first grade teacher, and they decided, why not? Spanish Club is a fantastic thing to do. And so <laughs> we have some parent volunteers. Uh, Mavi Morales, who is a native Spanish speaker, actually volunteers her time every Tuesday, starting at 7.45, to um, teach our students. And it's open to um, a second grade class, a third grade class, and a first grade class. Um, right now, they're just piloting it to see the, the level of interest. Um, and so it just gives them a way to build their toolbox for conversation and phrases. Um, it helps to uh, build synap uh, dendrites and synapses in the brain that will help them as they get into high school and it's time to take that foreign language because they've already got something to build from. Um, it's really fantastic. Uh, K-Rod says that as a parent, it's given her the confidence to start practicing Spanish that she learned in high school and just um, something that uh, her daughters can do and she really enjoys that they are learning from a native Spanish speaker. So. Spanish Club is totally rocking it. Some other parent volunteers are Rochelle um, Andrada and Samuel Corral, as well as K. Ron Bradley. So, this is Makerspace Club. Would you like to speak on Makerspace? No, I like how you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> so, Makerspace is another opportunity for students um, to provide, to challenge themselves with opportunities to be creative and explore. Um, technology and recognize that it is absolutely okay to fail forward um, because that is how we create change and so Amber Heather sponsors the Makerspace Club on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 7 30 as well and I do it with Mr. Rodriguez too who's a third grade teacher um, there we go but I put this quote up here because lots of kids say Miss Heather why are you so smart I'm like I'm not just smart I just stay with all these problems longer and then I was like this is a quote from something that I learned and so I put this in there because now the kids talk about how smart they are and even if they're not good and ELA or math, that they'll get there if they keep trying harder. So this and that's one thing I have noticed about the district. You, you go around and there's lots of signs uh, about helping kids grow uh, or develop a growth mindset. Uh, you'll see a lot of things in, in all of our schools about I haven't learned it yet, or you know just what Heather's saying and this uh, concept of failing forward. We really want our teachers. Uh, I used to tell teachers all the time they should be failing 25 percent of the time if they're being innovative in their classrooms, right? So. Uh, and when I speak with design people, they say it's not a failure if you learn something from it, right? So how do we instill that in our kids so that uh, they develop that uh, the growth mindset that they know they can have the self-efficacy to solve the things that they need to be able to solve and make their way through life. So the makerspace, this idea is probably where learning is going more than not. Uh, you know, and what Desi and I saw a lot in LA was uh, problem-based learning uh, that was all over on our visit with the Kaufman uh, Foundation. So I think anytime we can get kids into being able to pro uh, solve problems, think critically, 
uh, the Google evangelist, I always, uh, the, the educational evangelist, uh, Jamie Kasip says, you know, don't ask kids what they want to be when they grow up. Ask them what problem they want to solve, mm -hmm. and then get them the skills to be able to solve it, right? So that's really where we see learning going in the next, you know, three, five, ten years. Uh, and we want to be a part of that here at Piper. And I think clubs like this really help that to happen. So yeah, and I see those <coughs> kids that are <coughs> having problems in the classroom, and they come okay, here, so they just they just excel and this little boy in the picture with me um he was crying during the club and i came over i'm like what's the matter he's like i just can't get it perfect it's just not perfect I'm like nothing's going to be perfect you just have to and what they're trying to do is they're trying to defy gravity and trying to cause friction with the marble and the person that has the least amount of time with the or with the marble going down then they you know win the challenge but they all won and eventually got something um but he persevered so i said okay and they love to take it. <laughs> <laughs> and the other just going to go ahead and stay up there so we can <coughs> Okay, so um, right now we have started planting seeds inside the classroom. My classroom is filled with the entire school seeds <laughs> with lights everywhere. Um, and so right now all students are learning the process of germination. I've asked kids, have you ever heard that word in your life? Or if you haven't, raise your hand. All of them have raised their hand. So hopefully by the time we're done with this, they understand the process Deeper of germination. Okay. Yes, it's, it's, it's a lot for them to understand what a seed comes to a plant. Um, and eventually, these are. this is what I'm going to do with all of uh, the different grade levels um, according to the NGSS science standards. And then it's ELA and math because they're doing a lot of measurement and data. And then they're comparing and contrasting their different plants. Um, right now, we are planting cucumbers, spinach, tomatoes, peppers, broccoli, cauliflower, um, mm -hmm. beans, flowers, all sorts of flowers. Uh, Kitty will be talking to you later. She'll yes. want to. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so many things on the table. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's another initiative is that we hope to do like a farm to table mm -hmm. or have them come. Awesome. And, um, and so I actually got a cooking cart from the farm to table at the Planet Captain Planet Foundation that will be using in the classroom. Awesome. And the other piece is when she's talking about like kindergarten, first, second, third grade, she also was on our science committee and so our STEM committee. And they're also aligning that to our science uh, pacing guides, our curriculum pacing guides. And then they're looking at a few different things, different options for us mm -hmm. to go a little bit deeper with the content. So not only is Amber Heather teaching it within her classroom, yeah. but then we're also going a little bit deeper in the classroom as well, partnering with her. So these are just some pictures I took of the kids, um, and that's me today. So I left Friday, the plants. I did not put any sunlight or any water, and I was worried about them this weekend, but I come back, and they're like eight inches tall. So, um, yeah, you can go ahead and Okay. Um, this is some resources and events that we have going on. Um, We've drawn a diagram for what the inside, according to what the kids put on their 3D design, this is what it's gonna look like. Um, the beds are gonna be here. There's gonna be six beds. We're also gonna have a butterfly garden here, a pumpkin patch on the outside here. Um, and then we're gonna have that long part in the back. It's gonna be a work table with peg boards on the top of it. Um, we'll have trellises going up for the bean plants. Now you guys, I do not have a green thumb, but apparently I do now. <laughs> um, I have been working with Robin Nolan with TNR Farms. She's providing seeds, starter containers, and all the resources that we need, and she's helping me along the way quite a bit. Um, and then Kyron Fergus, um, he's going to be doing the flower beds provided and built by, um, oh, or he's by Kyron Fergus. He's a junior at Piper High School, and he's with Dayton Moore's C10 Mentoring and Leadership Program, and we're going to be putting those beds in before spring break, and they're going to be providing all of those beds and lumber and him and his high school service project buddies are going to be coming up and doing that. I'll be out there with some lunch and giving some lunch to them. Um, and then Scott Paulson is also a resource. Um, he is going to do the beds for the butterfly Scott garden. Scott works for the GDS. He works for BPU. BPU. Yep. Yeah, that's what I and, um, and then on April 24th, Arbor Day, the mayor is going to come with media and they'll be at Piper West um, with Scott Paulson who's going to plant trees for Arbor Day and then they'll tour the greenhouse. So that's why I'm planting. Mm -hmm. Welcome to attend. Once we have the time, we'll send it out to all of you. 
Uh, interestingly, uh, Desi and I went to a school that had a yep. little farm out back, didn't it? Yep. Down the it was, I, I, sat, I sent her videos really and pictures. Cool. Did you yeah, send all was, the pictures? It was amazing because I was like, oh my God, this is what we're I, doing. I love it. This is what it could look like. They actually, it is going to look like. They made us salads from the greenhouse. The students did. Yes. That's cool. It was amazing. Yes. Coming yes. Up. It's great. It's exciting. They come in every day. They're like, we got to see the plants. So I've had to put watering guidelines. This is when you water. Please do not overwater the fish. You're going to drown them. Well, I mean, these are just things they're learning. Um, and then Family Tree Nursery. Um, we've talked to them, and I've reached out to them. They're providing free soil for the life of however long we have this, um, and other resources to us. Um, the KC Stem Alliance, I did a pipe for a grant. I got a mini aquatic system. So it's just a small one, and then we're going to reach out to... And hopefully, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and then Stan Slaughter, he is the composting planting educator of the year, and so he works for Kansas. And he is um, he reached out to me this weekend, and he's possibly going to be providing free assembly, a uh, free assembly for the elementary school um, for composting and how to compost. And then next year, we will start composting um, with the cafeteria and this. We'll have compost bins all over the place, so then they can bring that out. And, um, and also, we are hoping to get solar panels installed by Kevin Coveno. Um, this is what it would look like. It would have a kiosk in the library, so when the energy is taken in and the meter, so it goes into electrical, it pushes back the meter instead of going forward with electrical. It'll wind it back. It'll save us energy. It'll save us cost for our electric. And then the kids will get to see the kiosk and they'll see how much energy is being saved towards, you know, in the sun. And it's a pretty cool learning experience for them. So this is all things that are happening right now. Yep. Yeah. So, as a district, we're working on strengthening relationships and um, enhancing our communication with all of our partners, whether it be parents, students, or community members, um, just to make to enrich education and learning for everyone. Um, it's not just about academics when we're talking about enrichment. It's about presenting students in the community with multiple ways to engage and maximize their learning through a variety of opportunities. This is how we're going to grow that confidence within students, build that leadership capacity within students. And um, enrichment offers collaboration, cultural awareness, relevance, and rigor through a fundamental need, which happens to be relationships. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to hand these to you guys. Take short. So this covers some of what we uh, will be discussing. Um, and you guys can refer back to it later. Thank you. Thank you.
we've kind of been working with them throughout the last couple of years to get the safe routes to school started. So, so far, um, Lidiana LaVoy has helped us. We, they've marked new white lines along the edge of Leavenworth so that the drivers have more yeah. feel of being aware of their surroundings. Um, she's walked the campus with us to mark out good walking routes for parents and families. And Ariana came with Safe Routes to School. We're going to try and start doing some learning classes for pedestrian and bicycle safety. And we would also are hoping to pair with the Career and Technical Ed program at the high school to get some engineering expertise for crosswalk um, to the school. And uh, no, I think that, yeah, that's been quite I can also update it some signage. Oh, too. that was yeah, it. Yep, yeah, yeah, you notice where the speed limit starts to drop a little bit? Those are all new signs mm -hmm. from, yes, this lady right here bringing safe routes to one of our site councils, yeah. and they just started working. So. Yeah, we'll be looking at the signs because of the new building. We'll look at the signage. Yeah. So we're investigating that. We're doing our part by putting in a 10 foot wide. Uh, Trail uh, in front of the building. That's a safe. From 131st yeah. to 128. So yeah, it's trail. And then just some things that we are looking at in the future. Um, if you are involved in the community page, we posted just last week mm -hmm. yeah. um, a petition that we are trying to collect signatures right now to get sidewalks because sidewalks are the number one thing that prevent the entire community from participating. Um, we can add in signage, we can mark pedestrian, you know, to, to show drivers that there's pedestrian traffic, but it doesn't get rid of the fact that she can't push a stroller in grass. I live a half mile from the school, and there's no way I would walk on the river with my elementary age kids, you know, or my I have a two-year-old, I would not walk with them. It's not safe. Um, so we are working on different initiatives to get there. Sidewalks is the biggest thing, but there's a few other things like Kate mentioned with the high school program that we want work on some alternatives there, um, and then pedestrian and driver safety courses as well. Those are coming in the future, but I would say the biggest one that there's a buzz on right now is the sidewalks. Um, so we plan to collect all those signatures. Um, I checked in the parking lot before I came in, and we were two, two, which I think is pretty awesome considering we've only been talking about this the last week with the public. Um, and then we will submit that as part of a community stakeholder input form to our commissioners on Friday. Um, the deadline for that, for any community stakeholder input for the 2021 budget, is Friday at noon. So I'll be delivering that to them Friday morning. Um, and then we hopefully will continue our conversation with the commissioners. We're pursuing funding from both local commissioners, but then also federal funding through an organization called MARC. If you're not familiar, with the Mid-America Regional Council is a governing body that distributes funds um, to different cities and municipalities that need funding. The criteria we're not a strong candidate for, um, so that's why we want to hit multiple classes for our funding and just see where that gets us. So this kind of shows you where we're at. There's a timeline in there also that shows you where we've come, um, where we hope to go. We're just going to keep pushing and see what we can't do. Continue to partner with across the school. And when we did my my plane with like yes. two side councils ago, mm -hmm. I mean he brought everyone. So yes. we just invited yeah. him, but he brought a traffic engineer, just make sure the mayor and boy, and then we also had the mayor's office that was yeah. there too. Um, and so yeah. they all came in, and we also gave them a pitch. Uh, we talked about, you know, we do hear that our patrons, they spend a lot of money, they have high taxes. And I said, this is the best thing. I said, you in, in town, you have the state-of-the-art, you know, stop signs and sidewalks, and I said, People want to see that here, and I said your actions will speak so loudly to our community when you can pull us all together. Because we we like that small town feel, but next to a big city. But we are still a community that likes to reach out to each other, who like to walk their kids to school in the morning, and just treasure those moments. And so it, it was nice. Mike came didn't show up. He showed up. And he brought lots of people. So it, it was an awesome experience. We really enjoyed it. Yeah. So we're hopeful that we'll see some. We're asking big too. We're asking from because the new school will have sidewalks in front of the new school up to 128th and Leavenworth, but then it stops there, and that doesn't benefit anybody beyond those two connecting neighborhoods. Um, so we would like to see it go from 128th all the way down to 115th Street. We dream big. Um, so we're prepared 
to um, look at alternatives, you know, maybe not a concrete sidewalk right now, maybe an asphalt sidewalk, or some other safe path that will help us to, to yes. increase yeah. pedestrian traffic. So that's where the high school will come in, helping us mm -hmm. kind of you know, we'll brainstorm. So we'll keep you guys updated on where we can go, but, and it'll be, I mean, at least two to three years before we really see any movement on this, unfortunately. But it's a start. start. Yeah, it is a start. start. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. I've met a group of mm -hmm. women yeah. that yeah. I get to work with. They're fabulous. How many signatures have you received so far? 302 is what 302. I saw electronic. Okay. So I will say Kate um, took around some, well, I think Gina did as well, um, paper signatures because not everybody's on Facebook. And that's really what we hit. And then Mrs. Crable's been out in one of her blasts. Yes. Two now. I think I saw it this afternoon, too. Um, put that out there as well. But we want to hit those that might not be online but that would still be interested in this. So we didn't have a chance to look at paper signatures, but 302 electronic. Awesome. Great job, it's ladies. Big, yeah, considering it's been one week. Yeah, that's, that's um, awesome. So yeah, so and then we did a Kate set up, you'll see in the very back of your packet, the, the bean picture. Mm -hmm. um, she set that up and we set that out during conferences, which was kind of a tough time because everyone was sick and it was a snow day the next day. Um, but you can still see just yeah. how many families at school were interested too. So that was kind of a fun way for us to get a little bit of the temperature feel before we really took a dive into this. And, um, we're learning a lot, a lot as we go along. Well, I think the master plan is a really a trail. We're building a 10 foot trail on that side. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and I do, um, it is, we're hoping to make it fit as part of that 2050 goal, is what Ms. Malloy had told us about, it was like a 2050 overarching goal. We just want to see pipe get those. Yeah. <laughs> What's some of our struggles on the federal grant side of it? The qualifications. The, federal, the qualifications, well, yeah. that's what So I was they need wondering. higher pedestrian traffic, higher vehicle traffic. Um, I think if one of them was the road itself, <coughs> is it, it's just not an, a city road. Even when it's used for schools, there's mm -hmm. two schools. For right now, for okay. right now, okay. this was according to them. Okay. I mean, I don't. I I would have to look. What the sure. No. Are. Um, when you compare Piper to actual inner city KCK, we're significantly smaller. So those are some struggles, but we still plan on pursuing. Yep. Yep. We absolutely are going to do it until they tell us no. Stop talking. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. Yeah. Yeah. Might not do anything, but it won't tell you. We'll be the flight at the plaza in the morning. So squeaky wheel gets oil. Great job, ladies. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you. Ms. Frankie, that communication, I don't have anyone in your building. Is that something that your counterparts at the other buildings could also push out to, to those of us? I early about possibly putting it on the district page. Okay, I'm just thinking. We talked here last week at the career fair. Yeah, oh, so the high schoolers so. to, you know, know how difficult that was to not have that, to be able mm -hmm. to maybe go sign if, you know, they don't We're know that it exists. We're trying to get signed at the high school, too, or the crosswalk. Yeah. That's yeah. not gotten... I promise I have my last group, these girls over here. Um, it's funny, uh, at the building, kids like to tell me things that we need to work on in the building or what they would like to see. And so when at school, they'll come in and schedule a meeting. I'll say, if you, if you want to talk about it, just go on and tell the secretary, let me know, and we'll, we'll get a meeting set up. So I think these girls remember when they were in our building because they called me this year and said, Ms. Grable, we need to set up a meeting. We want to talk to you about something we want to be able to do for your school. And so, of course, they met with me, and uh, I'm going to let them share a little bit about what they would like to do for our school this year. But I'm very proud of their leadership, the way that they handled themselves during the meeting, uh, the way they presented, right? And then questions and follow-up. So, great little leaders in the making right here. Mm -hmm. Who are we? We are a junior Girl Scout troop 1870. Um, we are from Piper, Kansas, and we have been together since kindergarten, and we are in fifth grade right now. Why are we doing this? We are earning our bronze award. The bronze award is the highest award in Girl Scouts of the USA that a junior can achieve. 
<laughs> we are asking Shooty Lumber to donate necessary supplies. Um, our Girl Scout troop will cover any additional cost with the proceeds of our and sales. Um, this project gives our Girl Scout troop our bronze award, and it's also the biggest project that a junior Girl Scout troop can achieve. The project um, shows us that we can make a difference in our community. And this also means a lot to us because this is where we went to school when we were younger and now we can make it better. Thank you. These are the girls that made this thing for us. Lily, Henry Walker, Samantha McKee, Lily Granger, Ella Granger, Emily Friend, Marston Johnson, Taylor Evans. Thank you for listening to us. Thank you. I'm Justin. Where are the ah. books coming from? Are they being donated? Are you? Uh, so my sister um, helped restore one at the middle um, at East when she was in fifth grade, mm -hmm. and so we're gonna get the books donated. Um, and there were a lot of books donated when they like they put out buckets around the school because a lot of times I know that we have books that we don't read yeah. and use, and so we can um, put them out around. We'll put buckets out and then we can um, pick them up and bring them to the. That's awesome. Also, we helped out at the um, uh, the Scholastic Book Fair at the elementary, and um, so we got some books donated there. Oh, cool! Lovely job. Look forward to the grand opening. Yeah. Yes. Thank, Thank you, ladies. Have amazing. Thank you. Excellent. And our kids are gonna look forward to it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And before uh, Billy uh, and her group goes, I want to thank Dave Riley and his team. They helped with the hoop house over there, and I know they ran electric, electric today, wasn't it? No, that's tomorrow. It's tomorrow. Okay. So we got it all coming and working out there, so we appreciate all that work. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. That's it for us. Thanks, Billy. Great job, girls. Great job. Great work. Great job. Great work. Thank you. Good job, guys. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. DLR Thank you. and JE Dunn. <laughs> I didn't hit that. Did you hit that? Right, yeah. Put all these good presentations in front of us. <laughs> With all the practice you've had, Dave. I don't know. Because they were talking about that. I apologize if I lose my voice. We get to, we have two years, we have two years. They're juniors, this year, next year, they have two years. Quick update, we haven't met with you last month, so it's been three months. Do a quick update, um, a lot has gone on. A lot of things that you don't see when you drive by because we're working inside the building. Good thing is, what we want to know is we're maintaining our recovery schedule, so we're still on for our July 17th substantial completion. That's what we're headed for. Um, we talked about that uh, temporary occupancy on the 17th. I think we have a, we have a whole rollout on moving the building and getting it back moving. And we're in process of making sure we got all checklists, everything that we got to have to meet that that uh, UG is going to require. Um, you can go ahead and go through the slides. I'll just talk about some of the things that we've done. As the masonry got completed, the exterior masonry on the building. Um, and I appreciate some of you come out to look at the sunshades and also the polished concrete mock-up to put in, give us your input, what you think about it, and uh, we can move on. As you can see, a lot of the finishes are going on. This is in the admin area. I know that Ashley and Teresa have walked the building uh, a couple times with us, and uh, I think they've been impressed with the progress that's been going on. That's good, awesome. And this is just some of the classroom areas uh, work under construction. That is the uh, corridor with the clear story. It's very impressive. John will have to give you kudos for that. It is very impressive. Dave yeah, can't uh, wait to the wash the windows over on that thing. Yeah, Dave is excited. Don't get him started. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> site work, we're trying to get site work up and going, so yeah, I'm very trailer. happy that our field staff pushed oh, getting all the parking lots at least the uh, base yeah. coat of asphalt in because I know we're the weather could be challenging, so we know that's not going to be the whole of um, uh, we did purchase a kiln. We went ahead and got a kiln. You know, I talked to the art teacher. She was uh, going to do that. So yeah, that is the art room. That is the art room. That's we have two right. options. Yeah. Okay. Um, one of the things we talked about in our last OAC was our elevator. Uh, we were supposed to be installing our elevator starting this week. They did push us back a week, but it's not on a critical path. They will be here next Monday, the 16th, to start. Uh, All those sun shades. <laughs> That's what I like. That's the mock up. I didn't get to I make it by. Did, did, so did, 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 did you see him in person? Go back on the I drove by him too. Thinking that I know Rob Richardson wanted to come look at it and throw holy water on it, but I don't know what's going to change. In the world. We feel like we should, we should just go ahead and Incense. go and get them released in order. Right now. We'll talk about that on Wednesday. Yeah, I, uh, and he's already approved it. I mean, John got it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think we're good with that. Who got to see him in person? Did you? Yeah, I think I forgot. I, I actually like it better. I, mean, the I thought they didn't look better, too bad from the road. better than running all the way to the top like him. Yeah, like we had. Yeah. Yeah, that was that like that street. Um, Remember the well, top one that ran all the way to the top of the building? Yeah. yeah. It definitely looked better. Or with the picture that we showed, they were they actually do what they're supposed to do. Yeah. yeah. The picture did show the shape. Yeah, we did. That's what I saw. Yeah, I pointed, I pointed that out. Yeah. yeah. That's a good thing. That's uh, She also she showed a picture of the kitchen. We got the kitchen flooring in now. Mm -hmm. It looks pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. We're doing a pre-install tomorrow with the um, kitchen equipment people. And that contractor will be getting them going probably March 23rd, March 24th, something like that. So things are progressing on the inside. That's the end of the masonry, the south end. So we've got uh, that completed, which is a big milestone. We have been doing some site work. That's by the dock area and that parking lot back behind on the building. That's impressive. I didn't see that last week. I know it wasn't there. It was great. Um, one thing Dave and I talked about today, you're going to hear about some summer projects today that we have a lot of uh, work that needs to be done. We did talk about where we are with the budget. Uh, you know, I don't know that we're going to, you know, save anything. I mean, I'll go through a little bit of that about how this was all budgeted a little bit later in the meeting. But we look like we're going to hit our mark anyway. I think uh, we're watching. We still have money in our uh, contingency. Uh, we have money in the allowances, and we also have put money into our extended time work for the overtime work that we need so we can meet our July 17th deadline. I think we should all feel pretty comfortable we're going to hit that budgeted number. Yeah, I, I feel comfortable that we're not going to see it. That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm not going to be over, which, which, is, which is a win. Yeah, yeah. You know, which is a win. Yeah. Yeah. We're monitoring that like with the right. overtime, it's only selected. Uh, the contractors are working, men on the job and doing it. Right. Yeah. I don't mean to put words in Dave's mouth about what we're going to do with that budget, but I, I do think we're hitting our, yeah. hitting our mark is what I want to get at. We're not going to be over budget, which is which is good, which I think helps us in other parts of that budget where money is budgeted as well. So. And we do have a meeting tomorrow with um, UG. I'm going to come for the 10 o'clock, the landscape. Part oh, okay. Yeah, we've got that too, but then we also have a meeting with UG. David Clark invited us to that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the kickoff meeting for their Leavenworth Road project. Oh. It's the pre-construction. So they're awarding that and getting ready to go. So um, that's at 1 o'clock. Dave, was there a decision on the concrete? Did everybody like the grind? Yeah, go back to that policy. Yeah, the one that's right. Did we go with the extra right? grind? Everybody liked think, the rocks? Yeah, I think okay. there was consensus. Right okay, good. Good. Well, one of the things I could tell when I was away there, which you probably saw in person, was how much more dirt. Oh, yeah. The one on the left picks up. Yeah. Like when people are walking. By the extra, I love the rock because it gave more. Make more character, and it made it harder to character with the semi gloss yeah. was going to be less, and plus with the cord po cold pour and stuff, when they it's not going to be as evident as in right. what you saw. So that's what we. Yeah, it discussed. Nice. So that was good. Good. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Real quick before you, oh. what about the sewer? What's the story of the sewer project? Where are the sewer project? The 
sewer project. The sewer, um, talking to the contractors, were on schedule. Okay. Um, Kissick, who's doing the sewer work, has promised me he will be done. His date is June 26th. Okay. Um, they were running a little bit behind on the pump station, um, so procurement issues that UG told us or reported in the meeting that they were doing some things to try to expedite that and get that worked out. I don't know what that would be, but what we've been told is we're going to be able to put the water in there okay. and we'll send it down to the pump station they can hold it. What if, just because that date is so close to the to the temporary uh, occupancy request as well as a substantial completion, um, what's the, I mean, where, where's our thought process on what are we going to do if that's not ready by those particular dates? Yeah. I mean, are we, are we? Well, we've talked to him about what can we do. We told UG, you know, we've got to have it. And Kissick will have all the lines in so we can pump a lot of water into the system and just let it run down there. So we can get, we, we can, you're saying we, we would bypass the pump itself? Well, they're going to get it. It's got to go all the way down to K7 through that pump okay. station. And there's a lot of pipe that can hold a lot of fluid until they can get that ready. Well, they said we could test without it being. Yeah, well, the other deal we're working out with the test, right. as long as it's not gray water, just. We can test it. We can, we can test sure. it, so we'll get our system tested. That's what they were concerned And all that. But they, we're actually yeah. being connected. And they were up near our bus barn digging the other day, right, Dave? They, yeah, yeah, they had to go down to do a bore under a road, but then they're coming back probably this week for weather players as well. You know, they're, they're pumping that back up to that manual. Uh, so what, what in particular, though, about are they, are they concerned with not having in time? Is it is actually the pump on the lift? That, is uh, it Chris Fingers, like, there's no problem. We're gonna yeah, okay. that's what Chris so tells me. I, I, I guess okay. i got to trust him on that part. That's what he's saying. He's that manager. But I went to the progress meeting last month, but he did show with me that that came up, that they have a, it's buying some electrical panels. It's not going to shift. Okay trying to get maybe a different vendor or whatever to solve the problem. So okay. I'm more concerned about the meeting we have tomorrow is getting all the Leavenworth Road work done and allowing us to get our project done so that you're uh, they're going to shut down that whole area from doing the widening for both Leavenworth Road and 131st. That section. Completely shut down? And so how tight is that schedule between their project and what we need I mean, right now? I don't know. You know, when we talked originally, they were supposed to award it first of March, and they have sick for uh, 90 days to get it done and be done and do all the Now, they're just now awarding it. Okay. So, and here we got rain. When are they going to get started? Right. If you put 90 days, there's a lot of work to get done. Right. And what's our calendar count from the time that's handed over to us to complete? Do, or do we the duration we're out? We're trying to do some of our work ahead of time, but they've got to do some grading. So that's what we're going to say. Can you start grading and get this done so we can put the sidewalk in and get our work done? We'll put the approaches in to where we're supposed to stop. Then you can come in and saw cut it and tie right into it. So that's, that's what we're trying to do. Have they been relocating the poles on 131st Street? What's that? Have they been relo relocating the power poles on 131st Street? I, Have you noticed that? I, I don't there was a pole. There was a pole laying there last week. Okay. At I think they're supposed to be done. Road, but I don't. Like I have no mid, idea where to put it. Mid March, like next week. Yeah, I noticed we did that work with uh, where we located the pole box <laughs> and everything to make it work for the uh, okay. But you may have a temporary outage coming up. Just FYI. More concerns that they brought up that if there's a water line that needs to be relocated and nobody can tell me what the status of it. Saying that that's gotta be done before you put the coal in the end, so. Did they did they talk to as why they why they're waiting why they waited on on the award to not get that out by March one? Because they did well, talk I, about that in the I talked to Amino Brothers who the contractor mm -hmm. got awarded in, so he was like, well, we're not starting it until we feel like we're ready. Not gonna rain. Well, if they had a great week last week and then it starts raining, so, so when did they, they when did they actually get a, did they get awarded on the first? They got it awarded on the first. Is what I think. 
So hopefully they've already started their shop drawings and procurement items for that. You'll know more tomorrow after tomorrow's meeting. Yeah, I know that's been some sleepless conversation at the Wednesday talks about when you can get your culvert in and get yes. that dug out. So hopefully that'll put some of that to rest that you've got and be able to keep it moving. Good yeah, questions. That. Thanks, John. Mm -hmm. He's got to have a little faith. So all going to come again. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Thank you. Move on to the superintendent's report. We have a number of things. Uh, first thing I, do, I want to talk a little bit about is uh, our uh, preparation for the uh, virus that's uh, going around the world. Uh, we have been meeting for the last two weeks. We've met with the nurses. The nurses continue to talk about that. Uh, County Health Department. Um, we'll be meeting with the nurses again tomorrow. I uh, know uh, principals last week to begin making any plans if we have to be closed for an extended period especially for our secondary kids to begin to uh, take a look at what would uh, we do uh, to maintain um, academics the best that we could from a virtual uh, point of view. That would probably mean we'd have to talk to some uh, uh, our, our principals for kids that maybe didn't have a device at home. So we're going to probably have to do something to make sure they can have a device and get some access if we do have to close one extended period. So. Uh, we'll meet again uh, tomorrow to go over what they're planning with their teachers. I know Steve's done some work at the middle school. We're starting to get uh, lots of vendors calling about uh, online opportunities. So it's <laughs> an interesting approach to all that. Uh, so we'll see where that goes. Uh, Dave has also gone out and pur uh, purchased uh, more um, uh, you know, high test cleaner. Uh, so if we need to come in, I know, I, I think I heard a uh, nearby school, or maybe it was a little late, or maybe, that cleaned uh, so this weekend in some of their schools. So I went in and did some deep cleaning, uh, depending on where they're seeing some of the illness. So we're checking with our uh, nurses on a, you know, pretty, you know, if they get a high number of absences, they're calling in over to me uh, so we can monitor that. So I just wanted you to know what we're doing with that and the preparation that we're making so that we can so uh, carry on. So then how does that work if we were to have to do some of the virtual schooling? How does that work with our hours that we meet the state? How well, have they I, had I, any input on any of that? Yeah. Well, uh, I got a call from a member of the State Board of Education who mm -hmm. wanted to verify a rumor that we were planning virtual learning. I said, yeah, I, I think other people are too, but uh, <laughs> you seem to think that, you know, that wasn't prevalent throughout Kansas. So I said, you guys are going to have to make a decision on what you're going to do with the hours, mm -hmm. the seat time, mm -hmm. and what you're going to give credit for. I, I can't imagine they'll make us come back in and make up three weeks or four weeks. I don't know. Okay. Uh, next would be K-12 uh, ITC. I think Grant is here to kind of answer any of your questions. Where we're kind of at with this right now, we don't have the contract ready for you. I know some of the things that you would ask for, and James is here to help answer some of that as well. Uh, it's been with our, our phone um, line and what, you know, we amended the contract last time it was here to include contracts. You guys did a great job of negotiating the one-time fee that uh, uh, came uh, came across uh, with uh, setting this up. So but where we're at, uh, James and I met with our attorneys today. We should have a red line version that I didn't check by the end of the day, which we'll get over to K-12 ITC. We would like to be able to get that preliminary approval, you know, contingent on us developing a contract that's, um, you know, works for everybody else. So uh, everybody involved. The numbers haven't changed in terms of the cost. Uh, that's not what we're. There's a couple of things that we want to make sure that we talk with them about before we sign off on the contract. So, um, so James, I don't know if you kind of want to walk through the phone expen expenditure. I, I put it up here. I sent it to the board over the weekend. Um, I, I'm going to let you because. I don't know that I know what I'm talking about. So I just happened to update it today. Uh, okay. I got back pricing on SpotNet for the existing uh, 2911 routers that we have in the other buildings, which handle our 911 calling when the system goes down. And um, so our annual cost actually, I mean, with that included, went up a bit. Um, so I mean, totally. Yeah. It's at 67 is what we would be paying. Right, that would go up to 69. Um, That's what we would pay every year to have our phones, and I think the phone bill itself is about the phone bill for the entire year is about 42586, uh, 
if we went with the voice solution from them. I'm still waiting on a call back from the alarm company, but um, assuming that uh, there's a person that was online, not email you with an update on it. Um, assuming that we can't replace the fire panel with uh, analog to digital, uh, we would still have to maintain a certain number of lines, and uh, the uh, those lines uh, would go. Currently, we're paying around three thousand a month for a phone bill. It would go down to around fourteen hundred a month if we got rid of if, if we line. well if we got rid of every POS line we have except for the ones that right. the fire company says we must have. And part of that is because um, AT and T charges on some of the lines they're charging us one hundred eighty five dollars a month. And just for a yeah, phone line. which if we went with this phone solution, we everything becomes digital, right? And we don't need any of that. So we'd be moving our fax over there. We'd yeah. be moving the um, so the number of lines we have goes down. We don't really have a phone bill. It all gets gobbled up by companies. And, and and if the fire company does come back and say we can go to a solution other than pots, then this grant bill will go to go away. Go away with with that. Yeah, so we'll be able to apply all that to our. Yeah. I and I think there's a cell solution we can get away from the pods, and we have we have to put in like a cell part and do all the fire all the fire panels. But even if we have to do that, a cell signal. I mean, I'm going to throw it out a number. I'm guessing that's probably thirty bucks a month per per. Uh, yeah, I was going to say the ones I know of usually is about fourteen dollars a month. So the cars is usually like two hundred and fifty dollars one time, usually on fire. Panel. So I think adding the phones, I think actually will probably. I think they added, I think eighty thousand dollars to the uh, to the quote that they gave us the other day. So, and then soft costs are always every summer. Uh, I spend a week redoing all mm -hmm. the phone, the voice over phone systems, mm -hmm. because of the way our system is currently set up. It's infinitely easier for me to assign an extension to a classroom than it is to do an extension to a teacher. Um, and because it's easier, it takes less time. Like I said, I'll, I'll spend a week resorting because the teachers move from the classroom to classroom, building to building mm -hmm. every summer. And I have to reach out to the principals and gather a bunch of information. So I don't know what, how you would measure my time other than break my salary down and how would be great. Right, for 40 hours. Well, we also have to purchase phones and all, yeah. Yeah. all the equipment that goes with yeah. it. We would not be. That's where I think that 67 or 69 comes from, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. So that's just hard, uh, equipment, software purchasing, things like that. Licensing. Licensing. Um, I did uh, also, I went to all these. Um, uh, so I added this uh, router to all the other buildings. Uh, which won't show up on here, but um, these routers, these 2911s, go end of life um, in uh, 2022. Mm. So we get two more years out of them, and then we have to replace them, and then that would be replacing them with an equivalent to this uh, ISR 4400, which is this, this is actually supposed to be 4300. So that's another three thousand thirty-five hundred dollars on top of that for each building. For each building. Each building. Well, again, that's a one time, but then until at the end of life the product again and then we have to do it again which may be five seven nine years it's kind of up to cisco uh what do you want to do that and so when you guys come in and replace all that what is it? yeah it's all it's all basically included so we can carry all of that uh, just digitally over the internet and uh, all that's built in so e911 is included uh, don't need those routers anymore and those routers typically Require smart net if you want to keep them up to date, which is licensing and uh, maintenance even after you purchase your one. So there are some ongoing costs with that. And the uh, the reason we can drop those uh, routers and do the E191 is we have battery backup in all of our closets now. So even if there is a power failure, we're still online. The network is still up, and we're still sending a signal out to the internet. And uh, the battery backups that I purchased at the start of the school year, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, are rated for, I think they'll hold up for 16 hours with three switches plugged into them. So, I mean, within 16 hours, we'll have finished the day and gone home. Hopefully, the PP was gotten us back up. So, what about the difference of like 15, not mm -hmm. counting the man hours that James puts in there? Mm -hmm. I can't remember what the number was. Yeah, it was yeah. about $80,000 yeah. additional. So, yeah. Yeah. Between 12 so, and 15. 
other two pads. Okay. Yeah. And, and with the, the, the smart net on the other routers, uh, the other buildings, it's not on this one online. We're looking at 69000 a year annually. Uh, after this initial year for buying this stuff for the new building, just our regular occurrence would be around $69,000 a year. Not including your week's so pay. So that's soft. That, that's all, that's all, that all matters. So, yeah. 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 So, yeah. yeah. so yeah. 12, 14, yeah. Yeah. When we do have to replace the routers, there's probably going to be a service charge for that, too, because you're not going to do it. Sure. I prefer you got somebody who's licensed in Cisco to come in and do it. Uh, just to make sure that you've done okay. right. What we're saying. I can do quite a bit of stuff here. I'm not licensed and for, I'm not certified in Cisco. Years. I, I know it. I mean, I can do it, right? Versus. Yeah. Since that's our 911, I'd rather. 69,000. Yeah. You get to change yeah. that number. A couple things. One, I don't know if on your budget, uh, I don't see SmartNet for the actual handsets. No. And that's the other thing. We don't have that. So SmartNet's a warranty from Cisco. So when we are providing that for you, we are warranting the handsets. So today, if one fills, we would be buying a handset. So there's some costs there that would probably make sense. Uh, and second, James is on vacation or something like that. And obviously, we've got. He's not allowed to do that. He can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> not approved. Yeah, it's rough around here. Yeah. So. Um, I left a memo for the new superintendent. <laughs> for <Perfect>. James. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, James. It's okay. I don't take one now. So, uh, <laughs> well, we were to leave for me and coronavirus hits. You know, okay. but, um, <laughs> certainly, we've got multiple staff that can do that at any time. Thank you. Okay. That side, we have phones that are still here from when Mr. Adams was first brought in. So, how 12 years ago, how long that was, we still have phones and there the hooks were still going out. So, you can't pick up the line and no answer, and I can never get them replaced. So, because there's never money. The latest version of phone and those will no longer function. Any, any questions? No. How, how, again, how urgent is this issue for, I mean, is this something that, that, that we're pushing? For? I mean, this is something that I know, what I'd really like to see, I guess, in some of these things that when we're putting out the expense, is just a simple comparison year by year, line by line. It's a real simple spreadsheet just to show year one trade off, year two. I mean, we, you know, something that's put out in black and white, so that's the spoken record. So that way, when we comment on it, there's no misinterpretation of this is the first time I'm seeing this sheet here. No, I sent it on he Saturday. Sent it. Yeah. Okay, I didn't. I, I haven't seen that, and so I, I just I, I want to make sure I'm fully understanding. If sure. I'm just adding the numbers up quickly, this system essentially over the course of five years is about a thirty-five thousand dollar cost increase to what we're currently doing, but there's upside in the fact that we would not manage. Down downside to the to the system at, during that time, and we're not we're not buying any of the equipment. It's similar to the infrastructure that we talked about. I mean, just in the new building alone, when we've gone through that because they're going to take over the new building. I, I I've dropped all the access points we were going to purchase. We went through uh, we went through them to buy our switches because they have the ability to um, you know uh, the purchasing power that they have compared to what we have. So we. have Probably save sixty thousand there alone. We're saving fifty-three thousand dollars on access points. So when we get to the the, uh, the budgeting piece around uh, uh, the construction piece, you'll see some of that has already dropped off, and the savings is already. I can't take that money and apply it to this because it's two different pots, right? The uh, construction piece. But, uh, so it's already saving. So I mean, what you're seeing is that. What we showed you the first time with the infrastructure, we said we were going to spend roughly two hundred and seventy thousand dollars, and they were going to charge two hundred and eighty-six thousand dollars, something uh, in those areas. And we tried to break that out about what we were buying the servers and except for the licensing that uh, you know we wouldn't need to do anymore. Uh, and how the phones? It's an additional eighty thousand. And initially we thought, well, let's we thought well, we could probably handle that. You know, we wanted to make sure we got the infrastructure through. Uh, this is a surprise to me. I knew that we spent about thirty-five, thirty-six thousand dollars a year on a phone bill, but now as we add this other stuff into it, we see we're closer to sixty, and they're going to charge eighty. So yeah, you're right. Over a five-year period, that's a hundred more thousand dollars that we would spend to have all of this just taken care of for us. 
So I, I, we, we can put all that back together and, and get it out to you. I mean, I, I, I would like to, I guess the other piece of it is too, is because I haven't bought a, a phone system for the district. I'm relatively newer to the board, but is there is there ever any value in these systems or do they have a seven year shelf life and then when we go to purchase new, there's no value in that system? Essentially, yeah. When Cisco end of life something, they won't simply release support for it. They won't release security updates and they themselves usually won't cover it at all. Um, if we replace it before they end of life something, then there is potentially some uh, value to it to another person to buy it. Um, I have actually tried to resell some of our older equipment before, and the amount that I was, I, I did a, 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 a current value estimation on a piece of hardware, was able to sell it online, and it cost to ship it to this person what we made. So I basically gave it away and they paid money, but then that money went right into shipping it because um, it was out of state. I couldn't just take it to them. Um, so there are companies that would probably buy some of this stuff, but they would lowball us on the on the actual value of the device. It's I mean, the only thing I've seen with resale has been the Apple computers, and they seem to resell at a pretty high value. Um, the other stuff, not so much. So. We can certainly wait. I mean, I, what we're trying to do is I know we want to get started in the transition mm -hmm. piece to this. Um, we're still, as I say, being out of town last week, I couldn't get the contract uh, finished to my liking before tonight. So uh, James and I were on the phone with our attorneys today. I'm trying to get something over to K-12. Um, you know, I wanted to get there today. I don't think I did. So that'll be the first thing in the morning. So. I could speak to a company that we went to a phone purchasing group versus because we ran into that same problem with it was just a lot of time spent trying to sell it and they weren't found out they were weren't you couldn't find and replace the price so hearing the same thing is similar so I can see the benefits of this you know looking at the numbers closer and having that is great but it's going to be an asset in regards to replacing so many phones I think it makes sense to Johnny's point though just to have in black and white Here's yeah. why we made this decision. I think there's two two line yeah. items though that aren't on there. I do feel like your time is worth money, so I feel like we need totally. to have yep. just the man hours that, and it can be guest or whatever. But just hearing you talk about trying to soft those teacher <laughs> things that is, I can imagine is a lot of time because yep. it's moving constantly. Yep. So that, but then I also think we should have something on there just the confidence and peace of mind that. I know I've called and been frustrated as a parent trying to, you know, call in and things like that. So I think there's that kind of unspoken peace of mind that we need to equate some value to that as we have families that are coming in trying to get a hold of teachers or say they left messages and now we've got conflict that we're answering questions to is worth something. And, and I, will, yeah. I agree. And I will say too that this also doesn't cover all those 12 year old phones. I've not estimated replacing those. Estimated. Um, so maybe we clean that up. And, and yep. then, again, how long do you keep those phones once you buy them? Um, I mean, they found they were hard to replace. I know, I know we, we, we create a spreadsheet with this. I, I, I was looking for last month's meeting. Um, and, and I may have, I, I just overlooked it. I, I didn't know saying it wasn't yeah, out. I just, what I just we said is what uh, James spends about 70% of his time now on the network and 30% working with um, our staff. That would flip under this arrangement where he can yeah. spend more time and 70% of his time with our teachers and with our staff members uh, or yeah staff and students and 30% on the network because it's not like he's going to be given scot free uh, you know he's going to have to continue yeah. to work uh, with our vendor uh, to get that done so and I we have a it broken out the I've done it just all, so I just thought I'd put it in I put it in last month. Does it impact the cell phones at all on the district cell phones on here? I saw, you know, the line no. that we pay. Is there any no. No. anybody yeah. that has a cell phone because they don't have a line in their room? No. In fact, we probably okay. would want them to have a cell phone, so okay. they didn't have a, you know, depending on what, if we had an emergency of some sort, we would want people. Oh, a lot yeah. of times you buy a, right now we a burner to put in the in the knapsack yeah. to yeah. run. You, know, you got to run out of the building. In, in, in the main of the cell phones, I will say that I uh, am looking at getting a device from Verizon to put in like the West Elementary School that has zero cell phone reception internally, put a device in there that would extend cell phone reception throughout the building so that we might be two or three of them for that building. Uh, so that if there was a problem like when Linda Hosh 
had a heart attack and cell phones weren't working and the cable for 911 was just slightly unplugged from the router uh, and they had a run outside and 15 mm. feet away from the building to call 911. Thankfully she's okay. But we don't want to run into that again. So I'm looking at extending cell phone range within the building in addition to battery backups for the existing phone system, E911. And going away from the PRI, you were talking about trying to call in and, and getting lines. Uh, our current line is a PRI trunk. It's like 28 phone lines bundled together. So that's, you can get maybe 26 phone calls in or out at, at the same time. With this, uh, I'm assuming it would be as much as our bandwidth will allow. That is worth something. Are you doing 911? <laughs> right now, yes. Right yeah, now. so 911 today, if you, you're running through a tel telephone line like you would have in your house probably in the older days. Uh, you probably have one or two of those to dial 911. So third person that tries to dial 911 will get a busy signal and won't be able to dial out. So same goes. I mean, if 100 people pick up trying to dial 911, we'll process all of those calls. So you're, you're talking about a little apples to oranges too on some of the capabilities that you're picking up with apples to oranges. But the one last thing I, I might mention too is, and it's always hard as we do cost analysis with customers, keep in mind our price is a fixed cost over five years. So you're estimating right. a spreadsheet on costs today where you go to buy phones in two years, Cisco's price may have gone up and there's cost increases that occur over time. So you're getting predictability in that cost as sure. well, uh, both in labor and in national equipment and license. I can run the spreadsheet out over five years just to give an idea because I, and, and I think, and again, and, and I, if I've had the info, I apologize for not being prepared. I just feel like kind of voting on it tonight, I would definitely be voting unprepared to, to give well, the right consideration. We talked about last time, you know, we had some action that we wanted to move forward. Then we got into the phone discussion last time. Right. So, right. you know, we don't, the, the issue is we don't meet for another month. So, right. you know, I'm holding these guys back a little bit um, on that, um, where I think, I, I mean, I think we're probably, you know, 85% of the way there. So we could certainly wait. The contract will be finished by April 3rd, uh, 14th. You know, we can come in with those spreadsheets, and you guys will get to do all the data. So okay. We can make a vote. Yeah. So just make a note to put on the discussion action for next month. Then. She's going to show. And I think that's what I was asking with you, Blaine, on the number. I remember Johnny had brought that up. We were weren't opposed to the f savings in the combo on the phone, but we needed to see yeah. some of those numbers. So and that's why I set yeah. it out. This yeah. Weekend. Yeah. Yeah. So we were good. Okay. I think. Oh gosh. What happened? James, your time, and mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you guys. Appreciate Thank you guys. it. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other questions? Any other reports? So we have the HR principal. Well, I've got a couple of things technical. because I have not been able. I wasn't able. To oh, sorry. I have like a number of things just to update you because I could not send out a news and notes this week, so I apologize for that. Um, we did send out. We're going to do an engagement survey with all of our staff members today. You may have seen that. Uh, that's the Gallup Q12. Uh, that will be open until March 20th. I felt it was important. A couple of schools really wanted to do it. They wanted the data back. I also felt it was important for the new superintendent to have that information coming in to the uh, uh, into the school year. I have had a gifted discussion with uh, several parents. I just you may have heard that from some parents around uh, the gifted program. So I met with them last Friday. I'm going to continue to try to meet with them to just just know that there's some question about how we would try to do some acceleration or not. Uh, we did send out an RFP for a health consultant uh, that went out today, uh, went out to Pucati, uh, Creative Planning, uh, Lockton, and uh, CBIS, so you're aware that that's out. Uh, I have to move the board meeting next month because I have to go for a special use permit to re-up our, our portable uh, classroom, so just know that. Uh, the last thing is uh, uh, Jessica will be leading, I think many of you, if not all of you, are going on March 30th to uh, visit uh, Lake of West, I believe. We're going to look at the Safety Academy, maybe the Public Administration Academy, uh, those type of things, be able to meet with teachers there. And again, uh, to be able to look as part of the Kaufman uh, Real World um, work that we're doing. So I uh, mentioned all that. The last thing to mention would be I'm also working with John Wynn on a, uh, if you're not familiar with the program called Project Search. Uh, that uh, is a internships with, uh, with our uh, students with disabilities that go up to age 21. Uh, we're going to be meeting with Providence Hospital as, pro as maybe the uh, institutional host uh, where our kids could go work. I'll also be meeting with QSD 500, Bonner, and uh, Turner to see if we all want to kind of 
uh, collaborate on this. So I think it's important when you're looking at internships for kids that you also include all of your kids, and that inclusionary piece is pretty important to me as we move forward. That was the quick stuff. Any other questions on any other reports? I just had a question on the personnel report. Who is facilitating? Are we doing the exit interviews? Probably no. not. I don't we don't have the manpower, nor the, we haven't had the time to be able to do that. So okay. that's something I did institute in my previous district. Um, so um, can do some of those, but right now um, I think we probably do a mix, probably a mix of a survey and a, uh, you know, if someone wanted to interview, we'd give them yeah, or even a, I mean, a survey definitely just we have some consistency. We tried that one year, um, sending out like uh, like a questionnaire survey. We didn't get. It was hard to get them back because they felt there was some trigger tied to them. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, that's the value of doing the ballot uh, right. engagement because it is a third party administration. Yep. There's no way for me to know who answered yeah. what. I think there has been some question in the past mm -hmm. whether uh, anonymous surveys remain anonymous. So I think yeah. that's part of it. Uh, but I think if we move that through an HR point of view, I just don't think Jenny's had the time. But this is the first year she's been able to go recruiting, so she did that and uh, took our principals with her to do that. So we are trying to build that HR function. Uh, but again, she's splitting two jobs. Uh, Jessica and I have talked a little bit about that. But I, I just wondered what that was. Grow, as we continue yeah. to grow, I'm also seeing yes. just a handful of transfers, it seems like, the last couple months where we're going from STEM to fifth grade, third grade, to, you know, and just to ask that question, it's, it's, but what's, it's, yeah, but just to ask, to, I would be interested, mm -hmm. you know, and maybe I'm a new kid on the block, but I would be interested in if we're asking them, hey, tell us why, right, mm -hmm. or whatever that looks like. I think it's just yeah, good think, information for us to have. I think that one that you referenced was a uh, staff request. Yeah. So. And so most of them are, yeah, just yeah. moving around. Yeah, I mean, that's, you guys know that, but I don't. Yeah. So yeah, it would be yeah. good, yeah. I think, for us as a yeah. team to know where the transition's coming from. Or to see, like, even maybe not from staff, but even principals could give a mm -hmm. yeah. basis of why there would yeah. be moves, yeah. even. Yeah. Versus just a list, a personal report. Yeah. yeah. No, I, uh, I, I, I agree with that. I, I like the exit of the The capacity hasn't been there. And that's kind of where this piece came from, too. I don't know if you guys all have these. Mm -hmm. That was a good request, I believe. Yeah. Trying to get more What's that? Like, well, just get new hires and get mm -hmm. kind of a background. Oh, oh, oh gotcha. Yep. 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 We talked about that at our retreat earlier this year. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Move down to discussion and action items. Yep. Uh, so the board meeting, uh, it would be moving the suggestion. I believe the email was the 14th, right? So is that a any problem with anybody? Can't really have the board meeting without the superintendent. So, so I like the idea of it. Looking for a motion on that. I think that would be good. On the change date to the 14th. Yep. Make a motion to change our April 13th board meeting to April 14th. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Motion passes 7 0. Change that in your calendars. Same time, same place, yeah. Uh, the discussion on YMCA contract. Mm. You know, I would ask that you approve the contract. I've worked it out. Our attorneys have reviewed it. Uh, it's been reviewed by the wise uh, attorneys. A um, couple of little things in there that I think are important to note. Uh, we're going to be renting, uh, making $30 uh, an hour uh, for one of our buildings or uh, for each building, I guess is how we ended up writing it. Uh, that'll uh, generate about $24,000 in revenue. Uh, for the school district um, so uh, we've also uh, I've kept that a little bit lower because uh, we're going to have a sliding scale for uh, families that are on free and reduced lunch so that we can get more access to them uh, I know in other school districts they um, at the title one schools for instance they don't charge at all for the Y to, to do that um, I will be meeting with them separately on a wellness program for the district as well so I think that was Pretty much it. So I think it'll be a great thing yep. for us to be able to do. So I'll save on our school bridge snacks. Yeah. <laughs> so that's it, yeah. <laughs> I'll recuse from the discussion and from the vote since I sat on that board. The oh. 
Fair. board as well. Yep. Yeah. Um, you have to leave. Oh yeah, we learned that. Yeah. We learned this at the leadership. <laughs> right? We went to that? the board meeting. And they were like, "It's not insane unless they leave." So <laughs> unless we're they leave, otherwise, otherwise, it's a, otherwise it's a no vote. <laughs> yeah, and, and it was no, pretty yeah. interesting to learn. <laughs> yeah, we forgot to pass that on. <laughs> Oops. Make sure you put some in that door. It might lock on you. Lock yeah, don't lock yourself out. I'll go get him. Do you, do you guys have any questions or comments about one two piece law? No, I'm appreciative that Dr. McCann brought this idea so that we could see that it wasn't very lucrative. And I know over the years when we brought like the at before and after when it became a thing, it was very hard on our admins, very hard on the district office. So to have this opportunity, I think, to bring in and, and alleviate some of those stressors yeah. is yeah. going to be. And intangible appreciated. Well, I so. think access is important. Mm -hmm. um, providing access to everybody. Um, not everybody can afford before and after school, and so being able to have that sliding scale and have access for everybody at all income levels, I think is great. So. All right. Entertain a motion. Make a motion that we approve the YMC contract as presented. Second. We have a motion and second. All those in favor. Motion passes six to zero. Y M C A. Y M C A. Y M C A. Was it Kim too? Like you should wear my hat. You should wear my A. Silent A. I'd ask uh, Dave Riley come forward. Uh, this is uh, time of year we want to talk about our summer projects. Um, I don't want you to get uh, sticker shots, but we are going to review some of the things that need to be done uh, in the district. Um, the reason we're here tonight is we need to get out to have bids. Doesn't mean we have to do it, um, but we need to get in the queue if we are going to do it. We brought a little bit of a first-hand knowledge of a need of a roof. You have a leak uh, behind you. So I wanted you to be able to see. Uh, this is the first time you We didn't plan that, day. by the way. Oh, I want to be clear the first about time Yes, usually I just do the work and those talk. Welcome. I'm so glad so, you're here. Yeah. This is awesome. Yeah. For me, I do appreciate them great. returning. I'm ready to get out of here. I do appreciate all the time Dave has put yes, in. You know, we do have a 10 year, so many hours. A, a ten year uh, piece that we, you know, a plan that we're putting together. The other thing to remember, and I think I brought it, um, we have gone through the budget over at the construction site uh, to determine where we're going to be at the end. I, I pushed uh, J.E. Dunn today a little bit about where do you think we're going to be with our current budget, and we're, we feel that we're going to be. Uh, pretty uh, pretty much on that mark. We do know that uh, the money that was budgeted for the road, sewer, sidewalks, we're probably going to be under that budgeted amount. I, Teresa was in the meeting when we really tried to take what people said we budgeted and then what we were actually spending. I'm trying to really uh, get an understanding yeah. about that. Yeah. Uh, the other piece in here is that there was a project uh, based contingency so there's a contingency built in, and you guys might understand this better than me but there's a contingency built in the construction cost yes. and then there was a contingency to the project we have not touched that con that contingency, contingency. The project, project right so it's just right. sitting there and it, it, you know it's, it's a pretty large sum of money so you know in case, you know in case anything does go wrong we do have money uh, you know we're getting pretty close to the end so uh, that's somewhere just south of a million dollars okay. of, of project contingency. Uh, the other piece is the FF&E. We have budgeted 2.3 million. We're about uh, 2.7, almost 2.8 million in FF&E. As you know, we, we've talked about East. I've got teachers working on turning that into a CTE building. Um, you know, I'd like to move some of that FF&E over there for FF&E at that building, and then looking at whatever we're able to save here around that. Uh, you know, we have about, and I don't want to use all of it, but let's say 750000 of that contingency. You know, Dave's got at least a million bucks worth of uh, stuff that he could get done. <laughs> um, the other thing for the board to remember, there are three, there is $3 million of premium bond that has not, have not been, it's not been allocated from that bond proceeds. So Jim can talk a little bit more about that uh, when he gets into the budgeting piece. So. Again, I'm not saying we spend it all here, but we do have some needs from a physical plant point of view. Uh, when we went out to do the, the uh, our land use committee, also reviewed uh, much of what we're going to talk about tonight. Uh, Daryl Myers, a community member who is a retired operations guy, Dave's been working with him, especially with the roofing 
aspects that we're trying to do. So what we're trying to do is not dip into what the money that we currently have, but try to use, if we can, the money that uh, was approved by our voters generously, by our voters to uh, equip, remodel, and fix our, our district facilities. So, uh, you know, I think that $3 million that we're holding back, you know, as we begin to think about our continued growth, might want to devote some of that toward land acquisition as well as we begin to think about what that's going to look like down the road. So, um, anyway, Dave, I'm going to turn it over to you for the specifics of it. But that's, I want you to know that we're working on finding the money to be able to do this so that uh, it's done in a, in a very thoughtful way. All right, we're going to try to get through this as painless as possible. Uh, uh, <laughs> Mr. Blaine asked me to uh, come up with five main places we need money. And I came up with six. Over in, in no order here. Uh, the playgrounds at West Elementary, the rubber is gone on them. Uh, they say they're a 10 year and we are going on 11. So we, we got our money's worth out of that. It's, it's separating real bad. It was installed poorly. Wrong, but we, we won't get into that. No, we won't. Uh, <laughs> So basically what we're looking at is having the company come in and take out the three sections and put in a four and play area. It's three and a half to three and three quarters inch thick. And it will give us a lot longer life expectancy. Right now they're shooting me a life expectancy of 12 years before we have to go back and top it with a thin layer on top. Similar to what we we're going to be asking a little bit later here. And then exact the track. kind of stuff like you put on the track. track okay. And this this is a safety hazard. I mean, there are yeah, holes in there. With Kin little, uh, kindergarten playground it might disappear. Two and three quarter there. inch cracks and they're three and four inches deep. And it ain't going to be an ankle twist. It's going to be an ankle break. So, and we're getting that real bad on all three of the playgrounds. Yeah. So just keep that in mind as we go through the numbers. But yeah, the playground is two hundred and thirty thousand six hundred and eighty nine dollars. And that is a uh, state bid. Uh, yes. Through Greenbush. Yes, it's Ooh. through Greenbush. They did knock uh, Greenbush knocked thirty seven thousand, I believe, off of it. So that's why it's a state bid. So we'd be good to go that way. Uh, the next one, we'll just go down the list here, is the track. We got bids to actually peel our rubber off our track, check the asphalt, put the rubber all back. That was two hundred eighty thousand dollars. So what we did is we also went with the second option of going in and topping our track that is there. Our asphalt seems good. Doesn't seem like we got a crack one in it. We walked it real close. We don't want that to happen. We look for cracks. There's no cracks in it. So we think we can just top it. And that's topping the runways on the track with everything for the high jump, everything, pole vaulting, everything. But that price is $95,494. Have we consulted with the track coach on that at all to see if that disqualifies us for hosting any meets or anything? We uh, consulted with the athletic director. Yeah, so the athletic director is more that I talk I to when it comes to the yeah. track okay. baseball field. I've not okay. talked to the individual coaches. Okay, I just, I, I mean, I just wondered. That's a big difference, but does it cost yeah, us I, something? I don't think unless we unless we don't have enough lanes to host something, which means we would have to put in a whole new track, which was the two hundred eighty thousand dollar number. Uh, and I don't know how many lanes we have down there. We, we had the yeah, eight lanes or six. We, we added two when they did, redid the track the last time. I mean, eight lanes is as much as you can have, right? I mean, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Doug should know, though, if he was. Okay. Yeah. I just, yeah. I just, no, but that's a good question, though. Yeah. Uh, third is, I know we hit you guys hard for it last year, is concrete repair on sidewalks. Uh, concrete repair, we're looking for 78000 $569. The concrete is like uh, at West Elementary in the handicap lanes. When you go there and you walk up the handicap lanes, you see they're crumbling and falling apart. So that is the ADA problem. That's why we're trying to fix it. On the back side of West at the dock area, there is a handrail going up there. Well, the top of the handrail is broke loose. It just wobbles. Uh, then at the high school area, uh, we have the handicap access ramp going to our gymnasium has the big handrail goes up and around. You go over there, be careful when you touch the bottom of that handrail because it moves, it's rottening off. But you can see the steps are getting big holes pitted in it and we're getting cracks all in there. We're looking at replacing basically the ramp 
and the whole flat area by the doors out to the parking lot. And then, of course, we got some other places that we're, we're just trying to fix all the concrete areas. Uh, next one is the baseball field. Uh, before season starts this year, we got some crowns. We're going to take a unilow down there and fill those crowns off. Uh, we'll lose a set of irrigation lines when we do it. There's nothing we can do about that. Uh, we're going to fill those two sections off. That way we can play our season this year with the least amount of somebody getting hit by a ball. And that's what we're worried about with these humps. We don't want the balls bouncing. And then our goal is, is when season's over, is to actually come in there and they're wanting us to go in there with the unit and take six to eight inches off to bring that field back down, the infill back down the level. And then, of course, then we're looking at paying the company, not saying that we can't do it, but we really don't want to do it, well, is we're gonna pay. put that build back so it's not on us. I mean, the company will come in, they laser it, they got all the tools to do it. Yeah. So we basically just, coming to level it out, right? Yeah, yeah. we're, we're just going to, what we're doing is still paying the high dollar company come in and dig the dirt out, we'll dig the dirt out. And this is for the baseball field? Baseball. What has the soccer, or the softball field look? Softball the varsity field. field. Varsity field mm -hmm. looks real nice after last year. We went in and added all the dirt. We added all the, uh, we turned the uh, infield better, and then we added all the sod down first and second base, I mean third base side, okay. and around behind home plate. Uh, it's got all new bases on it. Okay. Uh, it's got the new backstops. I'm not saying that if I was a softball parent, I couldn't see something wrong with the field, but right now, the varsity girls' field looks nice. Okay. We'll put a whole new infield mix on the baseball field. And that's what we want to do. What, what happens is that we end up putting uh, too much of the, whatever you want to call it, turf is diamond dry, whatever it might be. Uh, and so and we don't get, we need to make sure we get it there and turn it over a little bit on a more often basis. So um, I'm also working with Scott Paulson and, and some other folks about is there some, how the community can help us with that. So what you're going to get in April will be, I'll be bringing back a rental policy because I think part of what we're working on is working with our Piper uh, feeder programs to, uh, you know, part of what we're looking at in our policy, if you have 75% or more of Piper residents on in your feeder program, you get it for free. You may have to pay for the lights if you're practicing soccer on the football field or whatnot, but, um, or at the baseball field. So I think people would be more willing, and what I'm hearing from Scott, more people would be willing to donate if, if our feeder programs are able to use the facility. So we're sure. gonna try to work that out a little bit. Um, so I'll, I'll have that policy at least for the first reading in April. Uh, so you can look at that. I'm a big believer in, in opening those up. Uh, Doug's been very open to having that discussion about how we can uh, open up our rental uh, pieces uh, and let our community use it. Especially when you're going out and asking for bonds and that type of thing, we're asking, you know, we're going to ask people for another, you know, forty million dollars to finish out high school at some point. Um, you know, I think they, you know, deserve to be able to get into these buildings. But we need to have a good rental policy. Know who's in our buildings. Know who's using them. And go back if someone doesn't take care of our facility. Uh, we want to go back and visit with you <laughs> uh, because uh, certainly uh, that just costs the community more money as well. But. Uh, uh, so we'll have that for you uh, come uh, April uh, for that meeting. No, my concern, I didn't realize baseball was going to be on here and not to put sporting. I just know that the girls softball field, the varsity field, just making sure it's adhered to and complied with and cared for as much as the baseball field yeah, yeah, because yeah. in the past it had not been. Man, so, I can't argue that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's I've been there too long. <laughs> uh, right now what we're looking at is if we can get this done then next year what we would like to go back to do is Maybe look at the varsity field, but the JV field is the one that's being important. Yeah. Okay. And that's why we're laying out a 10 year plan, Teresa. Sure. We're adding sure everything into, into the we, JV We have plan. a whole line for athletics, right? Good so. All right, then the next thing is the asphalt work. That's $284,011. Basically, last year we did the drive to the middle school and we did the middle school parking lot. This here is actually going to mill six inches deep in the bad spots, two inches everywhere else for both sides of the high school, the road behind the high school, and the road going out from the community end building backside to the road. And then also it is going to uh, do the maintenance shop area, basically I think the shop area is the buses. You drive by and look at that, we're starting to fall through, we're getting some big holes where the buses park. So they're gonna mill, there's, 
few places there they're going to have to go six inches deep because where the bus is set. But then the rest of it will be a two inch mill. Uh, we're just fixing spots that are bad and then they're going to seal coat that and west uh, parking lot. Because west in almost 11 years now has only been patched a little bit last year and that was it. And then we're also looking, since we're going to redo the playground, we're going to go ahead for $4,000 and seal that playground asphalt because it hasn't been sealed for 11 years. So that way that's all done and then the playground can get repainted. The only thing, and then that is the good of the bad. The worst of the bad is the roof. And I got accused of something at four o'clock today that I did not like getting accused from from our boss. I got called over here at four o'clock on my way home by the librarian. Dave, we got water pouring into the library and we got a board meeting night. <laughs> so I called Blaine and told him that. First thing he said is, is that how you're going to pass for this? <laughs> Smart <laughs> thinking, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Mama didn't raise a fool. <laughs> but that is our problem right now is some roofs. This here roof, as far back as I can check on paperwork, it's 24 years old. It is spongy. What? And it is in bad shape. Now this part highlighted, though, is the part we're under right now, right? It's uh, not highlighted. Well, you're under it. She's not. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've had a leak over there. Uh, we had a leak over there. Though, we fixed that. That, was, that, that wasn't from the no. roof, though. That was the pipe, right? Well, that, that is the roof. That's yeah. the drain. Okay. The okay. drain. Uh, oh, what we found out today, and I know Blaine doesn't know nothing about this, we got two leaks back there. We got right. this main leak here, and we do have one over here in the corner okay. that we're going to call the people in tomorrow to take care of. Uh, but this is a rough game I've been talking about pretty much oh, we've been talking since about I got here. When, when you look at this plan, you'll see a small section of the roof out here. That's the one that's closest to the road. It is $111,250 to do that. But we're doing a $9,500 optional addition onto that because we're going to raise it. Our roof, these roofs right here are setting so flat. That if we get a good rain, we get two or three inches of water, it basically stands there for three or four days. It don't run off. So then on the second part, the bigger section, that additional space is $50,000. But that will raise the middle of the roof up, so it will slope to our drains. They promised me that we're looking at a small ponding area or two, just because of the way the unit's set up there. But we will no longer have water just setting. And that would extend the life of the roof as yes, well. Right? Yes, yes, yes. And they're saying that it could be longer, but they automatically give you a 20 year roof. Dave, is that what's on this roof now? Is a 20 year warranty that's four years expired? Is that what's up there? Yes. Okay. What it is is when they added the vocal music, the theater area. They added everything, everything got a new roof. When they built the two-story part on that side, it got, a two, it got a new roof. When this one here should have been put on at the same time, we didn't put a roof on this side. So this is, of everything we're looking at here in this aerial, this is the only out of warranty roof that we have on the high school? Yes, as of right now. <laughs> we're within two to three years of this area right in here going bad. The outer this part. outer yes. on here yes. is it all the way over here too? Yes, in the front. Yes. So it comes even over here. Yes. Okay. So that's how many years? Two or three years? Yeah, we we got two or three years left on that. Okay. And we put that on the ten year plan. We're, we're yeah, getting we're, bids right now. And I think what are these built up, modified? What kind of roofs are these? Are these? Yes. Yeah. yeah. But so like these here, these here got the gravel on top. Uh huh. So. So American roofing has come out and looked at these. American roofing. That's just it. Uh, You'll notice on a lot of this stuff that we, we did get a roofing consultant. We did sign up on our roofing consultant, but the roofing consultant told us when they seen this roof, don't wait for me. You know, he didn't want us to wait till he got approved. He's telling us that this roof needs stuff. I just want to make sure, I mean, there's not like an insurance policy because maybe there's one damage up there or hail damage or anything like that that potentially our insurance could pay for. If it's just flat is wear and tear, as, it is what it is. But. As, as much water that's set up there and the age of it and we started getting the mossy growing on it, mm -hmm. you know, 
your insurance company probably won't yeah. cover it. Well, I mean, hail damage, hail damage. It doesn't matter if there's moss on yeah, top of it. The bad thing about hail oh, damage is good thing about hail damage. 2017. Graduation. Hail yeah. damage is great on a roof that doesn't have gravel. Right. I mean, 90% of the time, you're, it's going to be hard pressed to find more hell damage than gravel. That's American, what we had done uh, was yeah, to give up. you guys an idea of what it's going to cost. We had American Roofing, usually does a lot of our roofing for us. They came down and gave us the estimate. Now, that's just it. That's not the price you're going to pay for this roof. That is their estimate to put this roof on. we got to get two more bids. Yeah. They could be higher, and this would be it, or they could be cheaper than the next two bids. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, so what we're asking is we want sort of your blessing to go out and we want to bid a lot of what we're talking about tonight mm -hmm. so that we get a sense and then come back to you and say, this is where we think we can get the money, uh, how we're going to pay for what we're going to do and, and get some hard sort of bids so that we can, we're not late to the game. I mean, Dave's been kind of pushing me a little bit because we need to we're, we're We're late to the game, guys. Yeah. That's what it is. I mean, well, a, lot of, a lot of companies are already booking up for summer work. And we're sure. we're a month or two behind. Like the concrete work, we, we got three bids, and uh, SNS concrete came out to be the cheapest. SNS is the ones that done your concrete the last year or two here. They're the same company. They're out of McLeod, um, licensed and bonded. And in my eyes, they do a good job. I mean, they they did the concrete right here in front of the windows here. Uh, asphalt bids. There again, uh, blacktop paving. As you can see, it's came in cheaper they're the ones that's been doing our asphalt bids for the last six seven years uh, the playground equipment we do not have to get another bid because that's on a state bid so basically what we're looking at is getting our other two bids for the roof uh, the baseball field and the track so then the bids that you already got for the concrete and asphalt work how long are they good until and their date that we have to decide by? Uh, 30 days. And we've had these for six months, almost. Uh, okay. But the good thing is, is they will not change. We, we've dealt with these companies for years. So they, they will not change their bid. Okay. So I have a question about that. I yes. mean, obviously, these are, this is who we're working with, and I could be totally wrong, but are there not any local businesses or people in the community that we could we, connect we, we, with? We, and we went after a couple concrete uh tear out, install concrete companies uh, two years ago when they said, change it up, let's get some new faces, let's go to Wyandotte County. And we called two companies. One guy came out, and in four days' time, he changed his bid like six times. Uh, and the other company that we called didn't show. I'm not saying that and, there's yeah. none more out there. It's just... I'm just thinking, is there someone that has kids that wants to invest in... You know, maybe it's pavement provided by, you know, I don't know, Johnny, maybe you know some people. I'm just thinking, well, how like can we top, The blacktop paving the is in Wyandotte County. They just moved, they're in Wyandotte County. I'm just wondering I mean, if we have not, an asset in yeah, our I mean, school district just, right now that it, could it, help In us. the school district, it, it would be hard to say. I mean, I, I don't know a lot of and the, Sometimes you get, you know, I'm trying to work with the baseball thing to get in-kind donations. And, you know, when I met with Scott, it was like, well, you know, nobody really wants to, nobody really wants to do that. So, my experience with that, I have been able to get in kind around some major projects. Yeah, yeah. Uh, most people tell you that that's your cost of doing business. I'm not going to help you with your operational side of things. Now, if you're doing a big project, we did a, a huge uh, athletic facility. We got people to donate, a uh, landscaping company to donate all the you know, in kind, and I gave them a letter saying they could take it off their Sure, and it was just an idea. I yeah, mean, I mean, people... It's just, uh, most of the time people are, like, saying yeah, that's your operation. I'm not going to help you with your operation. You the so down. Down. I just know, you know, people Jokes. pay for an arm and a leg to get the street sign with their name on it. What would yeah. they do no, they, if they, they could they won't help us with concrete anymore. or but roofing or something? And Little Joe's Asphalt, they used to do all of our asphalt work. I mean, his mom and dad lived half a mile down the road. But there again, when we start getting in these big lots, we get too big for his lay down machines and stuff. So he stepped away. All right, just but but he did a great job for us when we were small and everything we did. So anyway, that is what we're looking for. Um, the, there again, like I've been talking to Blaine, um, the asphalt guys, it, you know, the longer we wait, the harder it's going to be to get them here. Uh, the bad thing about the asphalt and the concrete especially 
is the good thing about the concrete of the summer schools going on at the middle school and everything we disrupted that last year there's no concrete work at the middle school this year so the concrete work would be everywhere else asphalt we could interfere with summer school not be able to go down the road while they're doing that road that part of that road um, we're just trying to get as much done that we can afford to do trying to get a jump on everything that we got to do for years to come uh, but the bad thing is when you sit down you add all that up it is one million thirty thousand five hundred and sixty three eighty eight I've never seen a figure that big, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that's where we're at. We're just trying to get bids. Uh, by the state, we got to have three. If there's somebody that wants us to bid a certain person, we could do that. I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not against any of that. So, Blaine, what do you need from us tonight? I just want your blessing. We're going to go out for bids. Yeah, we'll bring back, we'll sure. back to you with where we're going to. But I want you to know what the dollar number looks like, and that we're trying to. You know, kind of rob Peter to pay Paul as we try to really bring that other project in under budget, um, and then maybe we can move some of that money over so that we're not hitting into our fund balance or into our operation. Can I ask on, on the baseball field? When would you need to actually cut that that layer off for them to actually so be able to dry play enough? Uh, play right on now, that right field? now, we're to the point that the the first week is dry now. I mean, okay. what we were waiting for was the ground fall, the ground stalled. Yeah. So our intention was this week. That's going to go bye bye just yeah. because one one day. Bad news is we're going out on the main part of the field with a uniloader, mm -hmm. and we want it as dry as possible before we go out there and spin the tires around. Yeah. But we're looking at cutting the two lips off the inner and the outer. Yep. So, yeah, it's a big safety issue when that ball yes. falls off. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. But, I, just, I want to touch back on like what Jeb mentioned because I have we asked our insurance company I wouldn't uh, just a phone call just to come out and take a look at it and see. I can tell you for sure at the graduation of 2017. It hailed for an hour. It Broken windshields destroyed two like people who came for graduations total. I mean, it was a bad hail storm. We so I didn't think about that. Oh, did that we? Okay. But I, when he, yeah. uh, I, mean, I haven't been up to the road, but no when problem. he talks about this spongy condition on it, yeah. I would say that there is in the well, point. Okay, I, I just, I, that was a great insight. Cause I was like, the oh, bad case so bad. Is, is when they look at hell damage, like on my house when I had hell damage, they come out and the first thing they say is, how old is this roof? Because if the roof's at a certain peak, they, they void the word on the hill. Or I look on the commercial side. <laughs> Looking at this, I just have one more question. Over at um, East, when that gets turned into CTE, what are we doing with the playground equipment that's there and will there be repairs that we'll need to make it all on any of that asphalt if we get rid of it? Well, we weren't going to leave it out. We're going to leave it there for the community as well. I yeah, the only sure. thing we need to do is this is the year that we spend 2400 I think, for new wood chips. Okay. we got to put new wood chips. I, I think they're taking the one that, whatever that game they play in the back of East. Gaga. Gaga, yeah, yeah I yeah, measured yeah, that that's today. Gonna go, that's going to be fun to But we're going to leave everything there for the community. Okay, so yeah. you, over and you get the walking trail there. Okay, and yeah. Great question. Is there anything else I can help you with? Is we'll be money? back, is what we're saying. We'll be back. And, <laughs> Thank uh, you. Uh, Thanks, and Dave. We'll Thank you. With a, with a very detailed plan for your approval. And just my two cents on it, not that I'm not saying I'm not looking at everything on the sheet, but the most possible detail on the roof. I mean, I think that's obviously that's our number one the priority. number one priority yeah. above yeah. all. Yeah. And in fact, we, if we were to say, you know, if we, if we only had X amount of dollars, it would be to put the roof. Right. Because so, yeah. yeah. we got to keep the building envelope because it's going to lead to all kinds of problems. Yeah. Right. Yep. All right. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks, you, Dave. Dave. All right. Budget staffing updates. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Freeman's here tonight. We'll give you a link. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You were going to plug it in there, didn't you? Yeah. You know, I've got an alien computer. While I'm making this changeover. You want me to see it anything? Oh, it's all right. A couple of comments about some things that I've heard um, that just for the scope of okay, this last discussion that we just had. The hardest thing for any, any school district to do is stay on top of deferred maintenance, mostly because you never have quite enough money to get ahead of the game. Well, you're in a position right now, because of the way your, your uh, construction project is going, 
to be able to, to get a jump start on some of that because you know when you're looking at spending money on educating kids and that's your priority sometimes you don't always think about the fact that oh I got a roof leak and, and so it, it, it takes a lot of planning it takes a lot of looking at the financial side of it to, to get that plan in place so that you can do it in a timely manner. And that's the, that's the biggest challenge that any school district has. <laughs> and I also have to laugh. Uh, every I was in one school district where I was a business official, and uh, absolutely every time it rained, there were two roofing companies that, that did work in the school district. And every time it rained, they didn't even wait for a call. They just came out to the buildings because they knew they were going to leave. <laughs> What's it was just, it was just, yeah, it was just that way, you know. Anyway, so. Yeah, we don't want to go. No, you don't want to go there. Okay. <laughs> Not to pre-know your job wasn't perfect. <laughs> I'm like. See if I can make one. presentations now are turning into a budget review of where we are this year's budget and then looking at what we what we need to do in, in terms of uh, building and projecting the next budget okay uh, and the the detail on this year will start to, to grow in the next months okay um, but right now we're still humming along, our revenues and expenditures are, are looking like they should this time of year uh, when you look at bottom lines. Uh, one big thing that is going to happen, the second bond payment, you make bond payments twice a year. Once in the fall, and that's a, a principal and interest payment, and then once in the spring, in this case March, which is just all interest. Okay. Uh, so in March, you're going to make that second payment, that interest payment. And the important thing about that is that you leave enough cash balances in that fund to be able to pay the fall payment because you don't won't have any more taxes coming in, uh, you know, in the, at the fall time. So, so we're going to make that payment, and it looks to, it looks right now that this cash balance are, are going to remain strong as as we get kind of projected along the way. But as that, as we get into that, uh, get you get you a little bit more detail about that. But, so far, things are looking pretty good. We just found out that the KSDE fiscal audit uh, has been scheduled for right at the end of March. This is where they come in and make sure we counted the kids right, because that's where the funding all comes from. Okay, um, and upon completion, I'm thinking we will come back to the board and ask to republish the budget uh, to gain some more funding. I'll that, you'll see the detail of that in just a minute. All right, uh, here is some numbers. Last time I didn't give you a whole lot of numbers, but, but we're going to start doing more of that now. This is current budget revenue, okay, just so you see some of the differences in what's happening. Um, and our current budget, which was published, is, is in this column here. So you published a budget of general fund of $15.2 million. And then there was that cost of living that we instituted this year, we were five hundred thousand dollars. The LB was at thirty-one percent, so just a little bit shy of twenty-one million dollars. And I call that our operating funds, a general fund, and our local option budget, or something in the general fund. Well, the SO sixty-six Superintendent's Organizational Report is what reports all of the uh, all of the enrollment figures. Okay, that's what they're going to come out and audit. Well, if you the potential there is that we're going to gain about $140,000 because we had more weightings uh, than, than, we, than we've projected in the budget. Okay, that, It's all in the weightings. Um, so if our audit holds, then we'll republish to gain $140,000. That's all state aid. 
So that, and, and, and we'll, we'll, you can always use a little bit more money. But we'll know more about that by the time you have a, another board meeting. We probably won't come to you to republish it in, in April because we'll need to wait until the state verifies what that audit's going to be. But, but we'll know at that time what it's going to look like so we can start reporting it and also planning on how those expenditures will go. Okay? All right. Um, this is the projected revenue for next year. <clears throat> and understand <coughs> that it's all estimated. It's estimates on estimates on estimates, almost. Okay. The one difference here, though, is that, uh, that next year we know that the base state aid is going, this year it's 44.36, it's going up to 45. 69 so we know that we're going to get more money and we know what the, the general enrollment is because it's, it's based on this year's enrollment so we do know that for a fact so it's it's pretty safe to say that in our general fund we're looking at a 16.4 million dollar budget or about a million dollar increase okay that's just from this year's enrollment increase and the fact that the the, the base state aid the multiplier has gone up. Cost of living, we won't know exactly what that's going to be until June or so. Um, so I'm figuring it's going to probably be about the same amount. The LOB at 31% <clears throat> is going to go up a little bit because the enrollment went up, which this goes up and this is going to go up, but notice it's only about $74,000, $75,000. If you go to an LOB at 33%, okay, that LOB then goes up about $400,000. I'll talk more about that in just a minute. Okay? So, again, estimates based on some facts that we know, but also some other factors that, that we aren't sure about. Uh, the audit, for one thing, and uh, cost of living, and, and some other things. Okay? So, what you wind up with is options for next year's budget. Okay? If you dropped the cost of living, so no cost of living, and left your LOB at 31%, you're only looking at about $615,000 of, of new money. Okay, but <laughs> there's been years when that would seem like it's yeah. a windfall. Okay, uh, so if you keep the cost of living, keep the LOB at 31%, that's the million and 64,000, $64,000, okay? If you drop the cost of living, take the LOB 33%, your increase is $942,000. So that extra 2% and the and the uh, cost of living is, a, is about $100,000 difference between the two, okay? So they're, they're, they're very, very similar. So if you then keep the cost of living, go to 33%, then you're looking at just a little bit shy of a million and a half dollars of new revenue for next year. And this is operating money. This is what we pay the teachers. This is, you know, this is what we buy stuff with. Okay. This is what we educate the kids with. Uh, and more importantly, I think at this point in juncture, it's what we pay for our growth. This will not actually keep up with your growth, I don't think. That's why I've been telling you individually that we need to really leverage every dollar we can uh, to maintain and pay for the growth that we're going to see. And we're predicting 450 to 500 more kids over the next five years, and we have to begin to prepare for that. So we're going to talk a little bit about staffing here in a moment as well. Yeah. But part of that is that growth to be able to provide the support uh, and meet the needs of our students uh, throughout the district. So. Any questions? I know. And, and again, the detail will continue to, to grow a little bit as we get a little bit closer, and not only dollars and that sort of thing, but how, how it's going to look, start to look in the budget and that sort of thing as we start to make some choices about how that works. <clears throat> the next agenda item is, is the LOB resolution. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, if you want to have the option to go to 33%, by statute, you have to pass a resolution and publish it in the newspaper. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> That resolution is subject to a protest petition, 10% of qualified voters, registered voters. So 
The public has 40 days from the date of publication of the resolution to gather those signatures and take it to the county clerk and, so, and to be validated <coughs> as a protest, okay? If there is no protest, then the board has the authority, the permanent authority then, to take their LOB to 33%. But you don't have to, it's just that you have that authority. Now, if you do get a protest petition, the county clerk is going to notify you of that, and then you have the option of just dropping it all together or taking it to, a, to an election, either primary, general election, or special election, as you might hold. Okay, so even you pass the resolution, you get a protest petition um, that doesn't make you have to have an election. Okay, you can you can choose to drop it then if, if you don't want to, if you don't want to go there. Then if you come back at some other point, you'd have to pass the resolution again, go through the protest petition and that kind of stuff. You just have to kind of start over. Okay? Um, so once you get past this 40 days and you have that authority, then the decision will actually be made as you're building the budget and you start to see what tax levies are going to look like uh, because you're going to, if you keep the cost of living, you're going to have five tax levies. Okay, so <clears throat> you look at those and we try and balance those to keep the tax levy as level as possible. Okay, and there's lots of different things that we can look at and do with regard to that, um, but you do it in such a way to put uh, to leverage all of the dollars that you possibly can to help educate kids with. Okay. Uh, you've got capital outlay, you've got bonded interest, you've got cost of living, you've got general fund which you don't have any access to, and then you've got the, the LOB. So you've got five different places to look where, where you can generate the, the funds that you need for the district. But you don't, we don't make that decision until you look at a budget and say, yeah, we want to do this, and I've and somebody has out there has projected that this is where your mill levy is going to wind up. Uh, and then if you'll recall, the first time I stepped in front of you <coughs> last year, we talked about those mill levies and, and about what you can do with those mill levies up and down by how you manage uh, some of the data that, that, that goes into that process. So there's, there's different things to look at. Can I ask a couple questions real quick? Sure. So just to clarify, um, you know, we pass this tonight. We don't have to use it, right? It's just right. there for. If well, we got to get through the forty days, yeah. we're right. But even but right. even once you it gets in, yeah, right, exactly, right. It just gives us that option. Yeah. But how long is that good for? Forever. Okay. Mm. Thank you. And, and perpetuity is that the word? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> the other thing too is that with the LOB, and this is I don't can't imagine anybody would do this. But <clears throat> probably should quit calling it the LOB. No longer is it a local option budget. Statute requires that every school district in the state of Kansas have a 15% LOB. That just is. So you could, <clears throat> if you had 33% authority, you could set your set your percentage anywhere between 15% and 33% on any given year, okay? Same way with capital outlay. You have eight mil authority, you could, next year you could decide you want to do six mils or four mils, you know? So as, as long as you don't go above the cap on that authority. And your capital outlay mill level, by the way, is in perpetuity also in forever. Uh, okay, any other questions? Okay, I'm gonna quit talking. Kelly's gonna shoot this down to you a little bit. And and, and, and uh, the one thing I don't have all the rest of this on here, I'll bring it up in just a minute. But I didn't know whether you wanted to talk a, a minute about what essential means. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I asked Jenny earlier to go out and talk to every principal uh, to understand what their needs were for the school uh, that they're leading. Um, it's also my assessment after working here for a year that the fact that we are support was probably lacking a little bit. Um, and uh, I came to this number, Jim tried to get me to hold it somewhere around $750,000 because 
There are other things that we're looking to pay for. Uh, we also have teacher negotiations that we have to enter into. Uh, and um, so uh, we want to make sure that we uh, do not overspend here. So I'm, you know, this is what keeps me up at night, uh, if you will, uh, right? And I'm, I, I think that sometimes when we don't have the proper support, there are things that are not being attended to in our district, not because it's anyone's fault. Uh, and I don't want anything to not be done in a timely manner just because we don't have the support personnel to be able to do it. So, uh, and so when we talk through some of these positions, and I'll take some questions on it, um, uh, you know, um, I think there's some, uh, you'll understand why we're going and why we're suggesting what we're recommending. Uh, also, the $63,600 number is uh, an average uh, teacher package. That includes benefits, salary and benefits. So when you see that, probably in some of these positions, we would hire less than that. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's a placeholder. So we cannot put a real number in it. Uh, so just understand that. Uh, same thing with all these. I tried to put uh, all of them include uh, salaries and benefits. So those aren't the set, just the salaries when you look at those positions. So uh, as you can see, uh, uh, when I looked at what Tim had left uh, for us, um, he did have two counselors in there. I've been meeting with the counselors throughout the year. Uh, we've kind of arrived that we would hire a third counselor. And I had to remember the high school is going to get approximately 100 to 110 new students next year. Uh, they're going to graduate 130. They're going to bring in uh, roughly 200 freshmen. So we know there's a 70 number of students just increase in uh, Piper students alone. We got 40 kids new to the district at the high school last year. So conceivably they're going to have between, you know, I would guess 90 and 110 new students. I'd probably say higher. So they're going to need more. They're going to need some help in the counseling area. We also want that person to take on some of the workforce development, some of the Carl Perkins, uh, some of the career uh, workforce development stuff that we <laughs> talked about. Uh, and doing some of that college and career uh, type of stuff. The other position on there that came really from the counseling department was uh, student services coordinator. Uh, uh, that would be uh, um, that other position that Tim had suggested. I'm, I'm taking that FTE and not putting it into counseling because all the counselors were doing so much work outside of counseling that they couldn't do the counseling if you get the drift, right? So I went through all of that. So that position would be looking at doing things like leading the safety, um, you know, uh, being in charge of the emergency operations team that we're developing. Uh, if we get our STOP grant, uh, STOP school violence grant, they would direct that, uh, of which we could pay a portion of that salary from the grant. Um, they would also be uh, doing providing professional learning around suicide and bullying. Uh, around social and emotional um, aspects of the district. Uh, they would coordinate with USD 500 special ed needs of the district, uh, making sure that our IEPs are in compliance. So they don't have to be a special educator, but they would m need to make sure that our IEPs are being followed and working with the principals to make sure we have compliance. Uh, same thing with 504 plans. Right now, uh, I'm getting complaints from parents that 504 plan was written in sixth grade and it's in 10th grade now and no one's ever reviewed it. So we're going back to be able to do some of that work. Uh, we also would have this position, the student services coordinator, do some work district wide, uh, district wide around <laughs> Kansas City, Kansas Community College, Carl Perkins Career Pathways, also helping us with homeless um, 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 procedures and regulations, also helping with homebound. You know, we have a uh, you know, number of students each year that uh, are not able to come to school, so we work on uh, getting them their education through a homebound program. Uh, so, uh, so that would be what those two positions that we had uh, highlighted uh, uh, went for uh, in that uh, counseling slash uh, coordination of what we need to see done in the, uh, in the school district. Uh, the uh, physical education positions right now, the middle school uh, class size is around 55 kids when we don't have our part-time person there. Uh, we need a full-time person there. Uh, we would, uh, that's why you see a lesser amount there because we already are paying someone a part-time salary. Uh, so we don't have to pay the full amount there. Uh, but that would become a full, uh, we would probably, uh, we're looking for 
And I gotta be a little careful here, but looking for female teachers here only because we have no coverage in our locker rooms. So right now teachers, female teachers are asked to go down and spend five minutes before and five minutes after to cover those locker rooms. So um, again, you know, I think we've checked on that. We are able to do that, but uh, we'll be a little careful around that. Middle school computer science, really the elective classes in the middle school are very large. This would cover three of those computer science courses, and then there would be three other courses where we would allow uh, that person to help alleviate in the elective area and reduce those class sizes. Uh, at this point, support with librarian services is needed because uh, we'll open the new building. We think we can split a librarian between the two for the foreseeable future. We'll leave the two aides in place so that there always is someone in the library. Uh, this will allow teachers to send kids to the library and do just-in-time library and also be able to teach some classes around library sciences. Uh, we've talked about the need for a business official. Uh, tonight is another reason why you see the need. Having someone come in and explain uh, the budgeting pieces are important. Um, uh, we've also looked at, we have a part-time science teacher. We'd like that to be full-time. Uh, we're going to pull that. Uh, we've been teaching a lot of our science courses through the distance learning through Greenbush. We can make up some of that cost and make that position full-time and not incur, it would be a cost-neutral piece, as well as uh, we're moving another a teacher because of a, uh, we don't uh, necessarily need that FTE at the elementary <laughs> level, and we're going to move that to the high school, so that would be cost-neutral. Uh, and then if you uh, drop down into the classified, uh, having a secretary, um, we're trying to negotiating right now with Mr. Wynn where that placement of that teacher might be or secretary might be. Uh, the secretary, we need to split a, a full-time person between east and west. Right now our secretaries at those two buildings can't even go to lunch. So we have some fair labor standards we need to take a look at. Because we are opening a new building, we're adding approximately 100 and 27 new kids. We need another lunch roommate. We need another food service worker. We need 100. We got about 105,000 square feet to clean. So we're going to add custodians to that, and we're going to add one more grounds person. Those are what I felt would be the essential. Again, we posted for most of this. Uh, we were asking your permission to continue and finish out the posting. We don't necessarily have to hire. Uh, Jim and I do want to go through the budget and look at the possibility of reallocating what we see in the budget so that we could maybe even stretch our 1.5 million a little bit more, um, or 1.64,000 million, a little bit more. So, um, if you look on the second part, this is the key uh, positions. Uh, and this depends on where we're at with, you know, putting roofs on, a teacher settlement, where our revenue comes in at. Um, I've taken off those other two. We're going to not offer French, except for French 2 students. Uh, that's going to cost us about $6,000 through distance learning as we go forward. So we'll uh, eliminate that. Uh, the middle school, uh, they don't have four-person teams, if you know that. I don't know if you knew that or not. They have about, uh, you know, so the, the, the science and the so social studies mm -hmm. class sizes are higher than math and uh, mm -hmm. ELA. Uh, this is part of the discussion we've had via the uh, email recently on Title I math. I would like to really have that discussion more around academic support. We really don't have a Title I program. I mean, Jim mentioned we get about $137,000. And what this is is a interventionist, right? We have reading interventionists. The idea, do we want to go to math? Do we want to create a PLC around instructional coaching and be able to make sure that our teachers have the uh, Tier 1 support that they need to have while these teachers might work with tier two and tier three kids uh, depending on what the, what the needs would be. We're still watching that fourth grade at East uh, as it goes forward and that would depend on enrollment and I took out the elementary counselor that people had asked for. So if things come out on a little rosier side of revenue and, uh, and all the other costs uh, then you know maybe we'd go back and look at that as we went uh, forward. Some of the key positions, uh, people have asked for more security. Uh, our priority would be to put security at the middle school. Uh, if we were going to hire another, uh, you know, uh, off-duty SRO type, uh, retired SOR, S SRO type. Uh, some paraprofessionals at the high school, secretary, they would like another secretary at the high school. Uh, tech support, James is looking, uh, to, you know, 
gates and a little bit of tech support. And Dave would like another grounds person. We're adding 25 acres of developed property over there, so we did add, add the one grounds person. And then I went ahead and put on your list things that people had talked to us about uh, year two or three. Uh, of course, this is subject to change. Uh, you know, once Jessica gets here and starts to really dig into this and understand where uh, our needs are as a district, you know. Uh, but this is what the principals told us. You know, we went out and met with them and had that discussion. So I think all of that can be done over a two or three year period. Classified, we probably would want to put two full-time people in each building, like we currently we used to have, we no longer have, and you probably want an elementary security person to kind of round that out. But, uh, I promised you earlier in the year that we'd kind of give you a little bit of a staffing plan uh, where we're at. Um, I'm trying to keep this initial number around that seven. I think it's 788 that's on there. Jim and I talked about 750 uh, before we get to other things, and that's why I think as you look at the growth and the support that's needed in the district. Uh, the consideration that you give on moving that to 33 percent is pretty important i think depending on as time goes on and if you actually realize the growth that's being predicted i'll open it up for any questions around that staff so the grounds position is a needed position as one of them is. To, that's what i saw okay that's why because you're adding two 25 acres right right and then the custodians okay and you're adding 110,000 square feet yeah. to be clean. So yeah, I think yeah. Yeah. Ask yeah. And would those all three be only at the new building? Yes. Or, okay. Uh, he might move some people around. Okay. okay. The, you would have a, a daytime person with at least two night people, I think. I, okay. I mean, they've left. Okay. okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I should what, know that. Mm -hmm. What's current? What, what on this list is currently posted right now for? Jenny was unable, she's not feeling well, but I, I want to say that uh, the physical education positions are posted. Okay. Uh, I would say the business official got posted. Mm -hmm. And like, did the librarian get posted? Yeah. And the CTE sure um, And I think that the, the uh, special education has been posted. And I think the science, because those were two cost neutral uh, positions. I'm not sure the counseling or the service the student services coordinators have been. I'm stuck, still working on job descriptions for Counselor is, I believe. Yeah. Pardon me? Yeah, uh, high school, the counselor is. Yes. Yes. It hasn't been covered. Okay. It has, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we have, I mean, it's not on this list because it's not an additional, but the, uh, unless it's already down the assistant principal position at the. Oh, that's been posted. Yeah. yeah. But that's not an added position. Right. That's posted. But that's okay. just another big job out there that we'll have to fill. So I have a question on the, on the high school PE. Mm -hmm. I, I heard you say you're being careful, and I understand yeah. the reason with that. but. Um, what I've seen this school deal with in the past is um, have qualified coaches to come in and no teaching positions. Yeah. PE is a big one. Yeah. Um, for coaches in any sport. Um, so I, I guess my question would be I understand the supervision part right. from hiring a male if, if you were to hire a male, but um, I, I think when we limit ourselves yeah we have potential of losing coaches um, I can tell you I've heard rumor right now about a potential loss of one um, that could fill a position so uh, I, I would I would question the limiting it yeah. to a female Fair enough. however as somebody that's had a daughter for all these times being at Piper and the stuff that has transpired within a girl's locker room, it would be nice to say as a parent of a female to have that extra eyesight within that facility. I but agree. I get it. But but, but I'm talking no, about I it that way. I mean, it's a, it's you'd a, have to send somebody down there, which I understand you, you got to find somebody. So you could get your supervision that way. Okay. But but you're, I, I think we're limiting ourselves with our coaches um, in any sport. They definitely, that, I would think that would, that's, you know, I'm, I'm a former social studies teacher. And I know that, you know, some people don't like all the coaches end up teaching history, but uh, same kind of thing. I mean, there are certain areas that, uh, where you, you, it definitely does limit. I, I think what we're trying to look at is balance that supervision. Sure. Piece. No, I, 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 I understand that. I agree with that. I was right. in this building. I, I know supervision in the girls' locker room is a problem, mm -hmm. uh, without a doubt. Um, but it was when we had a female PE teacher in here as well. <laughs> well, so there is that. 
the other question I would have is, in my opinion, I don't know as we need a, a, another high school counselor and a student services coordinator at this time. Okay. I, I just think that, I'm not saying that it can't ever happen, but to hire both right off the bat, even with the additional 70 to 100, you're still gonna be splitting your numbers three ways now. They would, the, the student services coordinator would, co would coordinate those district-wide things like uh, IEP uh, compliance. Which is what they do now. What counselors do, so right. they, they don't have time to go counsel. And I would, I would say to you they may not do that because we have 504s that were put in place uh, eight years ago that have never been reviewed. Well, that's just my so, opinion. I, yeah. I, I would like to. I and, and, and what I'm also talking sure, about sure. testing, I don't want the counselors to have to do all the testing or uh, all the organization around that and the, uh, and the instructional coaches. That takes away time from kids uh, and uh, being able to serve the needs of kids. I mean, I'm, I'm open to anything. I'm not, sure. not going to die on the, on, on the hill. I'm just saying that we don't have that coordination. So the counselors currently do it. You're absolutely right. I, it also I takes say, away from time for them to be able I to feel like that is a vital position that we need for student services coordinators to ensure that we are following our IEPs because we don't want a lawsuit. Well, I, would, I, would, I, um, I guess my I opinion is this, either huge. one or the other. I don't think we need both. Well, somebody's going to, if the student services coordinator does it, then half their time or a third of their time is going to be seeing kids. Mm -hmm. Because as we add 100 kids here and put that into the counseling queue, the two people that we have now are not going to be able to do it. They're not able to do it now. I mean, they're working their tails off, in all honesty, and as a parent of a senior enrollment, it was a it was a rough process for them to, like, find time to actually get to know, you know, your child if they had a question. And I'll be honest, my child already had her outline planned, and I was very grateful for that because finding that time to deal with every, I could I was when I readily looked at it and thought if every kiddo was questioning their curriculum as to where they're going and really cared and wanted to know they can't touch everybody because it's just a lot to take well, on I mean, and we're adding more and more. I, I went back and forth on should we add a counselor at the elementary level or um, um, because there's a lot of kids over there you know I mean between those two buildings and you've got two Two counselors, and you're running 1,300 kids, yeah. probably 700. And the only thing that sticks out for me is, you know, it's listed in the high school space, but we're it's district wide. I'll be honest, I feel like they're already, you know, moving around so much that I, I just. Well, we would put this person at the at the, uh, at the CTE building, but wait, the student services? No, yeah. that person would be where would, they, they would, would, would serve the entire district, but they would office out of the east, out of the east, out of east. And one thing that you that you don't see is the reporting. Like I do some of the reporting for the state, and I have to get classes from each building. Every year, the high school is the hardest one because they have so many classes compared to elementary, and middle school. Yep. That every year it's a struggle. I start this report in October. I did not finish it until the week before it was due because struggling with getting that from the high school because they, they're they just spread all over the place. And, and I kind of went this route because I feel like it touched every building, mm -hmm. uh, whereas if I assigned a counselor to a building, other people would still be having additional duties. To the I mean, I, you know, I, we don't have to post We haven't sure. posted it. We don't have sure. to. I think it's there's conversation. To Teresa's yeah. point, I, some of where I think they may get so pulled is, I mean, when we sat down with our advisor mm -hmm. and just the learning and teaching and development when it comes to how to even register for classes mm -hmm. did not exist right and so I think we have to grow our homeroom or you know flex or whatever we're calling those teachers to be able to help with picking classes for the existing students that they have and maybe that's just an opportunity to educate them and grow them and do learning and development with them so that the counselors aren't I mean, I went down to the counselor's office, they weren't there, then I had to go to a teacher yeah. to ask questions. So I think maybe they are spread so thin, but we need to elevate just what our homeroom teachers are able to provide as support with some of that. Yeah, but the problem is, is that it's not the homeroom teacher's responsibility. If my child is interested in this kind of career path, that's why a counselor is there to talk with them and discuss and get to, you know, I, that's why I feel like, I, I admit, I like a counselor, oh, we need to, you know, this, 
now I've really started to see in these last three years as it has grown compared to when Matthew was in high school to, you know, it's like the need and they're just being pulled. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, yeah. And I guess that's is, where we need to know. Yeah. Is the advisor really the advisor or are they, you know, you, but, I also think, but I also think, you think want to add some? Yeah, I was just going to say it's good information to have but the national guidance school counselor kind of ratio that they like to see is one counselor to every 250 students. So that's kind of something to keep in mind now. Can you always do that? No. But it's a good it's a good number to think about as you're looking at staffing at a school. One counselor to 250 are the national recommendations to be able to do everything that we want to school counselor. And I would be curious, what are those recommendations for a what a counselor should be doing because right now I feel like yeah, they're sure. doing recommendations, mm -hmm. scholarships, scheduling, personal problems. Um, I mean, they're doing it all, and mm -hmm. I don't know if there is. So that's why they changed the name from guidance counselor to school counselor because they do all of those duties, and there are national standards that we, you could go to and see what are those expectations, even wide level, because that changes. So that, that could be helpful in this yeah. discussion as well. You know, I think they you do know, want to do more groups with kids. I think they do yeah. want to do more of the mm -hmm. uh, counseling part of what mm -hmm. they're doing, which was the idea behind student services coordinator was take some of that off their plate and touch every building mm -hmm. and see if that worked in terms of really giving them more time to spend with students. But again, like I say, I'm... Is there the... And again, I, I like the name of it, but is there... I feel like at some point we were talking like communications director and some things like that. Mm -hmm. Is there an element that it's not just so student services focused, but it can, if it's district wide, that maybe it's bridging the gap of where some of our disconnecting communication between all of our buildings also exists? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, where they would fit into the communication cycle would be about safety, emergency operations, um, you know, testing. Uh, you know, this, yeah. would, this person would be the assessment mm -hmm. coordinator. There you go. Uh, they would do and organize all of that testing, get that information out, um, social emotional information, like I said, on suicide and bullying. But again, they'd be working with Jenny to do some of that, but they could certainly generate and help generate uh, that communication that goes out to people. Uh, no question about that. Um, you know, I, I don't know that they would do the scholarship stuff, but you know, again, I don't know how they want to divvy up all that work, but to get that information out. I know that there's a counseling blast that goes out. It's one of the best I've seen mm -hmm. in you know my years of being uh, around schools. It's very comprehensive. Um, I was one of the complaints I used to get all the time. No one knows about scholarships. So, um, so yeah. I mean, I think there's a you know I'm playing around with job descriptions right now. They're they're different in different places uh, depending on the skill set of that person. So. Well, since we're growing and we need one, was there any discussion as to which one or the other do we see if we wanted to go with one over which the other? One or the other? Yeah, which one would provide more value now before and just wait till the well, second? I think where we're heading with workforce development, um, I think having that high school counselor and CTE. I think we've been. Um, I mean, I, I'm going to defer to Jessica a little bit on that because she's going to have to live with it. Um, and, you know, if we don't have someone coordinate, Someone has to coordinate it, otherwise, you know, my fear is something falls through the cracks that we really feel are important, and mm -hmm. then if someone says, well, why aren't you, well, you know, and we want to blame people when it's really the system that is creating right. some of the, uh, some of the issues, so. Well, and I think as we learned on our school tour, sorry to interrupt, um, that person that's working with your business partners, setting up internships, um, that, that relationship Great. piece, they, they spend a lot of time um, working with them and just setting up a lot that yeah. goes with that that's that you don't even see it's behind the scenes piece that's that right. really makes that work with the CTE and the real world world learning I mean it, it is so important but in my just my opinion I think both of these mm -hmm. both of these positions are essential this mm -hmm. student services coordinator is district wide this high school college and CTE counselor is is high school in your CTE and piece. probably going into but, dual credit and going into community college and going you know going into that you know, K-16, if it was. I yeah, I mean, there's definitely these, a void right now. And yeah, some of these schools, definitely. I, I mean, we need to that, expand that, on that, that CTE system. counselor, I mean, that person, that's all they did. They weren't right. a high school counselor as well. That's all they did is worked. Well, eventually, we'll need to hire a business I mean, liaison. We've talked about that. We may yeah, not be ready for that next year, but we will be ready for that in a year or two. Well, I think the other thing we have to take into consideration, we have more partnerships now with businesses than we've ever had. 
and we don't want to fail on those, you know, so. But I mean, if we need to hold back on one, I, my sense would be the student services coordinator because I think the CT wrote that we're going to see. Mm -hmm. And again, I, I want to pick on you a little bit, but I don't know how you feel about that. No, it's great. I, I would say um, these, are, these are conversations that all school districts are having. Just as you guys have talked about math and reading and tier one, two, and three, I'd like you to think about SEL in that same respect, right? So we need to have that support that all kids get with social emotional learning and then tier two and tier three. So that's where that national recommendation is coming from, that 250 to one student. Because right now, I, I bet, and it's something we could do if you want more information that, that I've done in the past, is I've asked the counselors for one week to track the activity and how many times yeah. they're doing mm. actual guidance with students versus yeah. the other parts of the yeah. job that are more of why they're called a school counselor versus a guidance mm. counselor. And that may be information that we could get to you in a week. And that's part of what I, I've done in the past when I'm like, is it time to add that next person? So I think, you know, thinking of that, tier one, tier two, and tier three, what do we want to have be able, available to all kids? Right now, guidance counselors or school counselors with everything they have, they're not being able to provide that tier one support. And so then what happens is instead of being proactive, they become reactive as kids are struggling with anxiety, depression, other issues. And then we kind of get in this world where we're in crisis, whereas if we invested in it up front, I think we can, we can have fewer kids in that tier two and tier three area. So what's so, our ratio yeah. right now? <laughs> well, at the high school, we've got uh, approximately Sorry. 650 kids. Uh, next year, we'll probably have 750. Mm -hmm. uh, at the elementary, we have two counselors, and we're you're running how many kids over? 25 so, person. It'll be, it'll be seven. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the help. Uh, seven, I think you're going to be close to 700, I think, at East. And they're, they're going to lose 100, so they're going to be at 500, I think, maybe at West. So you're running 1,200 kids with two counselors? That's a lot. Yeah. Because I, I, I feel like in the elementary, I think Ms. Kelsey probably comes in maybe once every month or every two weeks to even do a lesson with each classroom. Well, the state and doesn't so require even right. not doing that, that's, and A lot that's, of districts really struggle you know, with that point yeah. 250. Yeah. I'm just going to be Absolutely. honest about that. Yeah. I'm just saying that's it. Yeah. But I, like where I was, we didn't. I mean, we had we, we had 2,000 students at the high school. We had eight counselors. Yeah. We had a lot. Yeah. So what's our current though? Like, don't we have a psychologist? You have a psychologist, right. or what are? I mean, that, but that's that that different. They come out of the SD 500, so they're yeah, not really they do our like social, like social education. For for special education, if it's even just Welch on staff for us, right? So like each, I don't know if you want to go into like if sure. the difference between counselor versus the school psych versus the social worker. They all have different roles, yeah. which. They're not all just counseling students. So I don't know if you want to describe I think the difference. You did a great job, and I think of that again. If I can have you think of those tiers, the different level of therapy and, and and the certification that they have comes into place as well. So a school psychologist, they're going to be doing a lot in the special education realm, looking at that data, and helping monitor behaviors, supporting that. Can they? I think they're underutilized. I think we can use them more in the therapeutic vein. Um, but, but they are tied up with some of those other things within your social okay. workers. Yeah, maybe maybe more depending on the setting. Yeah. And what do we currently have now in that category? For our school I know we have uh, one. We have two sure. social workers, I want to say, and I want to say we have... We have two. We got one. We got an additional one this year the co-op gave us. Gave us. Yeah. It's not the right term. And but I want to say, you see, Jessica like Wells is a, yeah. is a psych. I want to say we have three psychs. Now, sites can do some therapeutic. Now, one thing I've played around with and I've done in other districts where we wanted to get more coverage for the SEL was to combine a counseling site position and do that and let them do some, they were full-time in that building and they uh, did the counseling and they did the testing. So uh, it takes a special person to be able to do both. But, uh, you know, I, I thought about doing that at East, uh, putting a, a counselor site there. And the, the advantage of that is you can get reimbursed for the psych uh, psych services because it's yeah, a special ed, so you that. get like you get a, a half of okay. a half, or you get a quarter of a position back for reimbursements. But okay, um, so you can save a little bit of money. That was a budgetary thing to try to be creative and do that. So uh, you can do a little bit of that, and then you could have one at each elementary, but then that doesn't take anything off the plate 
<clears throat> at the middle or at the high school. So, uh, it, and then so you add one at the high school, and then now you got a middle school that really, you know, they're going to be pushing 700 kids with 200, uh, with 200. And the middle school is a place where kids go left or right, mm -hmm. and um, you know, make decisions that maybe aren't in their best interest at times. I do have, and I'll share this, I'll put it into a, a document, I, I had each counselor explain to me what they didn't, you know, what wasn't counseling to them, so I can review that. So not to belabor this and not to get home at midnight tonight, yeah. um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold off on the student services, I'm gonna, we'll do a little bit of talking yeah, and talk through that a little bit. Um, I just want to, so I know Larry brought it up, but is there anyone else that has concerns about that? I have two, two other things I'd, I'd like to talk about, but they're not related to that. Okay. I just, I think there, I would, instead of posting it right now for a position, I would love to just massage maybe a little more what that looks like. Uh, just to maximize the talent, the assets that we have right now before we throw another just job well, description. In Kim, it. I want to be clear. I'm not just throwing something. Oh, no, no. I know, okay. I know. You've done a great job of explaining yeah. what that is, but I just, I'm still like marinating how we can maximize the assets that we have right now exactly. more. And a week review, like Jessica suggested, and then we'll be yeah, able I, to see. I already it. had that. We, we yeah. did that earlier this did year. Did you? Oh, okay. I just got to put oh, it into yep. a document. Yep, that, then we're good. That makes yeah. sense so I can see that. And I want to meet with them to make sure I represent it correctly. Yeah, no, I mean, it's it's absolute. I love it. I love this, how you call it, but. You know, what is it all going to encompass? Is it the 504s, just some of those things? Is it more yeah, community yeah, yeah. relations, the internships, all the stuff that we're growing in? You know, Well, that's two different things. I mean, the internships would yeah, be that, that counseling that's position that's at the high school. Student that. services would be more of that district-wide compliance officer, if you want to call it. A little bit different on the IEPs, 504s, assessments, uh, social-emotional all that business stuff. Yeah, I'll, 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 sure. I'll do both. I'll get that from everybody and then I'll put it into a job description as well. Do you think that we could add to that um, maybe it would be helpful for them to see the social emotional character development standards? Sure. Um, have you guys seen those before that are okay. expected to be integrated into the classroom that might be helpful? Mm -hmm. And then those national um, school counselor standards yep. would be good and, and maybe kind of with that do we have a list of the, the social workers that we have in the district and maybe those I see that maybe all I don't have their I don't have their roles. So we uh, they, 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 I mainly work with the counseling. Like the FTE so they can see how many social yeah. workers do we have, how many skip sites. As we think about SEL and those levels, you know, that would be good information. And I think at some point, do we, you know, what do we do? Do we continue to pay USD 500 right. and then we're at their mercy whether we get the social worker or the psychologist or not? So, again, that's a bigger conversation in the future. All right, I'll pull all that together. I Just got it. PC points for this. Um, yeah. And only because I know of one and I want to make sure we're, uh, you know, I'm more focused in the middle school and the elementary where my children are. That's what you know, right? So yeah. I know we have on here positions and I know it's librarian and secretary. We're talking about split positions. Yes. I know that that's something that we need, need to make sure that we're clearly defined on what that is for what roles can be split and what roles can't be split. Okay. I know I know there would be a fine line there and I know there's current individuals who currently have the split program who'd still be looking for that. And so to offer new positions that are split, I, I just want to make sure that we're not, that, that we're walking a, the, the fine line on exactly what that is on, on definition wise. The second piece is, this is, this is, you know, a big chunk of new positions, right? I think more than probably anybody here sitting at the table has seen in, in all their times of term. So um, with that, my, my biggest concern is we just we just got our HR person last year, okay, who's also doing communication. And when I think of what it takes for me to bring on one new project manager, right, it's, I know what's in that in posting and in the interviewing and in that, what, what, what are we thinking through, or I just want to make sure we are thinking through the support staff for all these postings and how are we really going to get through them and how are we really going to get to the right individual and how are we going to make sure we're tracking that because this to me that uh, when I see all of this the biggest concern that I see is uh, how, how are we going to get this accomplished properly that that's that's the biggest piece I see because um, this is I mean make no mistake about it 
this is a job right here. Yeah. Now, this, this is a job in bringing this many people on board to the district. And we have someone right now filling that role, who's splitting role. Uh, we don't have, you know, I mean, I, I would say when I see this sheet, the business official for the office is somebody that can come on and split, a, you know, and take on some other roles in that district office. So that's one that I think from day one I've said that we need. Mm -hmm. But that's the, when I see this, the, my biggest concern draws to that. How do we fill these positions properly using, you know, being the best steward of the dollars for the position and the person we're getting? So. That, that just yeah, I think a little bit of that, Jim, answer that is that the, the principals are also a part of that. So, you know, it's not just Jen right. uh, doing that. So, um, she, they, they went with her to recruiting fairs. And, you know, you heard Billy, uh, Billy mentioned she was at, I forget which one she went to, but they were. So in that process, they actually meet with their building lead, well, not absolutely. her, in the yeah, HR well, side. We can, we can design it however we want to. Okay. When I was a principal, we did all our own hiring. Okay. Uh, HR made sure they had the application, they were certified, they gotcha. you know, done a background check, mm -hmm. that their transcripts checked out, and then they were released in the building. Okay. And because they're going to be the one hiring. Gotcha. Be, now, right now, I think Jenny sits in on a lot of them, so you're, okay. you're not wrong okay. in that. But it's, uh, when do we let go of that? When do we allow them to do something? Right. Yeah. And to make sure that they do it in a way that is uh, you know, legal and blah, blah, blah. Right. It's teachers, it's principals, and it's Jenny in there. It's not just Jenny doing okay. it all. And if I could comment, too, uh, we work in a lot of different sizes of districts. And the district this size is in, right now, you're in a position where, or for instance, you need a business official. Uh, not quite to the point yet where you need to have a full-blown human resources department, but you're close. Okay, uh, but you you are in needs other places. That, that's why the discussion here has, has been so good, uh, and I think Dr. McCann has done a great job of of doing some internal research with the staff that's here, finding out what the needs are, and you're going to find out there's more needs. Okay, and the fact that he put out a two and three year Right. You know, those will all change. Yeah. You know, as as this develops, as not only the instructional side develops, but the operational side develops as well, and that, that's the support you're talking about too. Uh, you know, that will all start to change. But if you don't have some sort of a picture out there to kind of look at to start with, then, then you can get blindsided, you get caught. But having a discussion like this, where these issues are brought up, is is the key to that planning down the road. And you just have to keep that going. But part of that, too, comes with understanding and knowing what your options are and, and where you're going. And, and I think it's both on the instructional side as well as, as on the operational side. And, and uh, so I, this is, you know, I've, sure. I've been very impressed with you, you people as, as a board. I've been in front of a lot of boards, and you, you folks ask all of the right questions. I'm just I'm really impressed. <laughs> Thank you. Are we done with staffing? Can I finish my presentation? Well, yeah. first off, kudos to uh, Ms. Vader because she got award recognition for her counseling services <laughs> earlier this year, and I know she works her tail off. So. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to give you more information, but um, the current positions that we have uh, posted that uh, the, the high school counselor would, that will also handle the workforce development, the physical education, and, and uh, Larry's points noted. I, I don't think there's any question about that. Right? You know, we worry about that as well. Maintaining our coaching. Uh, are you guys fine with computer science at the middle school getting that posted and you know, yes. kind of lower that class size? Now the split yeah. between the librarian, we decided to keep that aid there, kind of like just for your that sort of thing about what's that person's just going to run both libraries and just. And, and I think more so I'm advocating not that I'm against a split, yeah. but just that if we're offering splits that we make sure that we're definitely out there for anyone to, to entertain that. I mean, that's going to be a rocky road, right? I mean, I happen to know personally from someone who's teaching in my children's school who has that position, who I know would like to keep it, and, I, and that's going to be something that we'll face, um, you know. So that that would be that. That's just something of of interest. That I mean, it's a full time position. You know that. Right? So, right. It, yeah. but okay. the elementary librarian has to be a certified individual mm -hmm. as well. So that's also another component of that to think about. 
And then the uh, secretarial split is really, you're going to need to add a, another, the other half for that next year. I'm just spreading it out over two years to get the money for it. Otherwise, I'd be advocating two now. Right? Mm -hmm. so. But I think mm -hmm. de defining that role and what you're doing is really important. Right. And I, I agree. I took that in. All right, I'm going to move forward. I'm going to hold on a couple of these, but I'll get back to you. I'll get a little more info to you. Here we are. And the rest of the slides you've seen, except a couple of, I want to reiterate a couple of things. And I didn't have a chance to add it to this slide, I would have. At the next board meeting, you're going to see a finance report from me uh, on your budget. We get to through March, you're 75% of the way through the fiscal year. Okay, so I'm going to show you a, a report that I think in the long run, something like this, whether it's this one or something else uh, that's like this, will help you immensely in terms of understanding where you are within a fiscal year and, and, and how everything kind of fits together and works. So you'll get a, a, a different kind of financial report that you'll see um, and, and about this fiscal year. Okay. Uh, but then the rest of it is trying to finish out the fiscal year and, and do all the planning that goes along with that. You've already started doing some of these things. We've already started the project costs of the facilities, and, and uh, I've got to get into fixed cost uh, increases and some things like that just to help generate what that next year's budget is going to be. Uh, in May, we really begin the closing out of the fiscal year uh, at that point and we start to outline the budget. By that I mean we know, we think we're gonna have, we're gonna have this much money in general fund and this in the LOB, and we know we're gonna have X amount, percentage of that in salaries and benefits, and we'll start to build a bigger picture of that so you can kind of see where some of these plans that you're making new staffing, or whether it's other programs or other things that we need to, to implement, how that might fit into the thing. In June, we'll finalize those expenditures and transfers. Um, and uh, again, I will probably ask that there be a special board meeting right at the very end of June to do the, that final so you see how we can finish up primarily with what we do with cash balances in the district and, and where that's going to land. And before we get to that, I'll explain what my perception is on what you need in terms of cash balances and why. Uh, and then we can have some discussion about that as well. So, and obviously in July, we're going to review the budget, approve the publication, and I'll ask you about the budget. So, uh, the, the ball is rolling down the hill now, so <laughs> we'll get there sooner or later. Any questions for me, or is there anything that you'd like to see from me next month uh, that you might need more information on, or um, just a, a, an expansion of something we've been talking about. Um, and if not necessarily and I think of other things, uh, let Dr. McCann know and he'll get with me and, and we'll develop whatever you guys want to look at. I just want to say thank you. I appreciate yeah, this you. in depth. This sure. is the best explanation of knowing. I hope especially for new board members to have seen yeah. our process that I hadn't seen in the past either. So I, I appreciate well, it. Understand it's that, good. you know, this is a lot for you, yeah. but this is we're just chunks of service. But you've got to have an understanding, not only of something like this, but also the, the staffing issue, the facilities issue. You have to have some understanding of how all of that has to work and the planning and the discussions that are required to make those good decisions. You know, once you have a plan and a goal in mind, then you get all the detail and, and, and all the information down below, the decisions become a little bit easier. Yeah, amen. And, uh, it's, uh, a, a staff developer that, that, that taught me how to do a lot of things was back in the dealer school district, uh, Dana Richardson. Uh, and she always talked about, this was in the 90s, okay, this was a long time ago, talked about data driven decisions, okay person in my position provides a lot of that data as well as instructional side too, the data that goes along there. You have to have a good foundation of that data to be able to make the kind of decisions that you, you know you're going to have to make. So, Thank you. Good work. Thank you, James. Thanks, Thank sir. You. Yeah.
Is he in our interview for our business? <laughs> <laughs> uh, my full-time job is taking care of a nine-month-old and a four-year-old. Right oh, my. Mm -hmm. That's harder. Uh, <laughs> and believe me, this, this is relaxing. <laughs> so next is the LOB resolution. We would ask that you approve that. We're recommending that you do it. Well, uh, Kelly will publish it on Facebook. Okay. Okay. Is there anyone that's strongly opposed to doing the 33? No. No. Are we looking for a motion? Yeah. yeah. Please. I was going to die there. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get I I Okay. <laughs> uh, make a motion that the board approve the resolution to not exceed 33% for the local option budget. A second. A motion a second. All those in favor? Motion passes 7-0. That's great. Uh, school naming. We're meeting Thursday night. Thursday. So we'll have that for you next month. Very nice. Mm. Student <laughs> handbooks, first read. Um, and just to kind of clarify, first read is like hopefully people have read them and have questions about what was in there. <laughs> um, hey, were we um, increasing student parking at the high school? We are a little bit. Okay, I, it it's been. What's the current price? I want to say eight dollars. Twenty dollars. Oh no, 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 it was five. Ten. It's going ten. Okay, it was five. Five. It's going to ten. Five. 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 Okay. I thought. Okay. The most of the stuff that's we've already that that changing the, the fees, bus the services, fees. And okay, yeah, for whatever reason, things okay. like that. Okay. Okay. I thought major it was in. Currently, no, okay. it's less than that. I remember I was like, oh, that's all I pay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. it was, you know, I, I, I look at this early childhood thing. You know, we've had some issues a little bit. You know, because it's all a lottery-based thing. I don't know if you guys have gotten any phone calls on that. But you know, I did talk to Doug about. You know, can we take back one of the rooms over there? How often is it used? So I, I'm looking at how often those rooms are used by the community. I'm happy to keep a couple of them, but I may try to hijack hijack one back because we could expand our early childhood, which would help mm. our academics um, down the road. And, and in talking to Doug, I I thought we sold that building, but we didn't sell it. We oh. just we're just paying for the renovations. It's a it's kind of a Jim and I were talking about today. It's, it's kind of a weird deal, but. Uh, uh, but it is what it is. But um, but I don't. So I just so you know, I'm kind of researching that. Uh, I thought the UG had control. Year, primarily because we have a number of people that can't get the care that they want to get. So. And I, I mentioned it to Blaine again. I know we kind of talked about it each year. It comes up around enrollment time and handbook time. I would really encourage the district to look at streamlining enrollment to district office at some point and really just have more discussion and, and talk about it and just move that way, just so that. We get there. Even I mean, I, I really want to get. The, I know Kelly, but I know Kim could do it. I, I, we freed up some stuff. We can get there, and I think we need to get there. We're at that point where we need to just well, do it. We need to change the district. Our, we need to go instead of having it at each building. It's too. just yeah, it's all over the place. We need to streamline enrollment. Yeah, yeah, just make sure everything's yeah, following the same. I mean, you're going to get two policy I mean, I'm writing down future. The discipline policy is going to come back. Kevin and I met on it, and haven't heard go to bed yet. So I'll reach out, but. Um, you know, I handed it off to you a little bit to look at. And then the other one is that rental policy. And I'm just trying to work on that enrollment. I just haven't got it. So I would do that. If you guys haven't had a chance to read the handbooks again yet, please make sure you read them. And if you have questions, email them. Like, yeah, you can filter them through me. That's fine. Um, but the, the idea is when we come in next meeting is to actually approve them and not ask additional questions where they have to change them again. Uh, so hopefully we can get questions answered prior to. Prior to. And any changes? Maybe yep, would be, would be yeah. on there. But for the most part, there wasn't a ton of stuff on there that got changed. Okay. Then we'll move into uh, executive session. Just for board anyway. Yeah. Can we go across the hall? How long do you think, Blaine? How long? 
I hope no more than a half an hour. So start with Kind of what you guys say. 10 10 by my break. Um, I move we go into executive session for preliminary discussion of latest proposal for the 2020 21 administrators' contracts pursuant to the exception of non elected personnel under the Kansas Open Meeting Act. And the open meeting will include Dr. McCann and will resume in the boardroom at 10 10. Second. We have a motion. We need a second. Second. Motion to second. All those in favor? Uh, motion passes seven zero. Yeah. Five minutes ago, take a bathroom break yes. real quick. Bio break. Yeah. And I appreciate you, Jeff, explaining that because I didn't really do that for my first two years.